Sims has grown to love the Rod Simba song. He loves it. I do. You I go back bumping. and I watch all the intros and you're it's drumming. jamming. Yeah, it's jamming. It's Rod Simba, baby. Rod Simba, Rod baby. Rod Simba. Musical they, director. It makes me think of my old, uh, my my best friend in college was Rod Babers. He's kind of gone off the radar on us, which, yeah, you, is, you which is expected. Yes. Except he's still on your leg. Well, I mean, yes, he's on my leg. He was like, I mean, we shared a bathroom together for three years, and he would go off the radar on me then when we shared a bathroom. So I like, have friends like that. Yeah, like, I have friends that just He would disappear. lock himself in the room in his room for like three days. <laughs> yeah, what was and he like doing? you'd knock on the door, and he wouldn't answer, and he'd be like, "No, nah, fuck you, I want to be alone." But he was in there. He was, yeah, that's just the way he was. I knew. I, I, I have friends that I'm an Irish exiter, but I have friends that Irish exit all the time. I have friends that like go off the grid, and then you like oh, see right, their right. like Machu Picchu, and you're like, bro, like right. Some people just do that individual journey shit. Yeah, well, you mean like that when you say Irish extra, like Irish goodbyes, like yeah, the people I at the leave party who just anybody. leave the party and you're like, all where's, the where's Lefko? Did yeah. you hear that? Yeah. Lefko just used his one curse word for the entire episode. There it goes. One curse word. What did I say? You said that Irish exit. Shh. Oh. So Josh has been listening lately and he thinks that we've been cursing a lot. And he believes that we should go back to one of the original. Not only tenets. Josh, one of our bosses, Joey Guns Yanarella as and well. I've had family members say it too. So, have they? Not, so everyone yeah. is everyone is down on the curse. See, that's a shame because nobody I know or my family listens to me. <laughs> so <laughs> so no one knows. Nobody ever knows. But we used to, when we first did the podcast at the very beginning, and the old Sims Lefko diehards can swear by this. We used to have a one curse word right. rule where you get to use one the entire show. It was a condition for us being allowed to do the podcast. Yes. Yeah, From the we bosses. We said we wanted to do curses all the time. And they, and were they like, said one maybe curse. Maybe want a show. So do we want to do it? Sims well, over. I'd like to hear from our, our listeners. For one, you want to put it out to them. I would like to know yes, whether they want to iTunes comment or you know tweet the podcast. So I'm going to put. A, I'll yes, put that a, what they should do. I would like to know that. Yes. So when this podcast comes right. out Wednesday evening, right. I will put out a Twitter poll that says, should we institute a one curse word rule? I don't want one. I can't do one. How about two? It's got to be two. I'm at least number two. I was number two Three's playing a football. Crowd. I like two. Uh, so you like two? <laughs> I like two. You're right. Because then if I knew from now on that I had one left. Yeah. All right. So we'll put it out. Should we institute a two curse word limit? Uh, yeah. I like infinity. I want to be able to curse as much as I fucking want. Okay, I, there's, there's one. one. You got one more, buddy. Okay, fine. That's Otherwise, right. today, over. For today, I'm going to. Otherwise, you get banned. Right. Like the dude, I covered Louisville basketball winning the championship, and now it never happened. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Yeah, your career. Is you saw just... they took away the title 2013. Oh yeah, no, that is crazy. You're Most right. of my broadcasting reel was me like with members of that team, and now it never happened. I know. It's... I covered a banned championship. I always think about that as an athlete and go, like, does it matter? I, yeah, exactly right. It's so silly. Like, no, Reggie Bush, you won the Heisman. Yeah, we, right? I don't we really said that when we had Reggie Bush. Cash or not. You won the Heisman. I to me, you're the Heisman winner. Screw everybody it else. Doesn't, it, I it doesn't matter. I almost said my second curse word. You, you said your second curse. I said actually, screw. No, no, no. You said one before. You said F it. It doesn't matter. You actually did. Oh, you're right. Damn but it. see, that's why this is going to be hard. Gosh, it's going to be really hard. I'm excited to be back with you guys. We've we've had a lot of radio interviews, Radio Row interviews that we've been playing. Uh, at the end of today's episode, it is going to be Orlando Pace. Orlando Pace had such a good time that he wants to come on again soon. And we might, when we start breaking down the draft offensive linemen, give Orlando Pace some homework i would like that and then also on friday we are going to have three more interviews for you this week we're going to do an all white guys all white boy supreme defensive episode we're going to have jared allen luke keekley and tj watt jared allen was awesome Luke Keekley, we talked about the woodpecker stuff and all that. So that'll great. be coming up on Friday. All yep. that'll be great. Uh, and TJ Watt opened up a little bit. He was a little unwattish with M us. Mr. Protein Shake himself. Oh, exactly. It was yeah. perfect that he was protein shake. <laughs> but uh, for coming up dates, this is for all the football fans out there wondering what's ahead. The NFL Combine starts next Tuesday. And I love the Combine. Guess the 40 with Adam Lefko. I still want that to be a game. It's I a still think game. I'm really good, good at it. it. You are. So, yeah, we, we talk about that all the time. So, Tuesday is like interviews. So, this is when one quarterback gets vilified and they start making it. will be Baker Mayfield. They're going to talk about all of his off the field stuff. Baker or Lamar Jackson. I mean, that's right. That's... And then Lamar Jackson's going to be asked whether or not he believes well, he's a wide play receiver. receiver. Even though you got like one of the best arms we've ever seen ever. And then, and then like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is getting 
getting to watch these guys in underwear run around and when their things pop out. Yeah. That was always That's fun. That's what you're excited about. Uh, two Tuesdays from now, March 6th, is the franchise tag deadline. And we're going to get into the guys that have been tagged already. But that's no sort of the end. popping out on that yep. deadline. Yep. And then March 12th is when you can start contacting free agents. And then March 14th is when free agency starts. So I think next week I kind of want to do an overview on Monday. Just like looking at who we should pay attention for with the combine. Okay. And then start getting into some more free agency talk around them. Gotcha. You have not watched any draft film yet, right? I have not. I got it all ready. I thought I was going to start watching the quarterbacks you got the magical this iPad? weekend. I do. I got it all ready. I just haven't nice. actually dove into it yet. I'm going to start uh, with the quarterbacks here. I am so excited for Sims' quarterback right. breakdowns. Yeah. I would like to do another prospect evaluation of course. this year. Maybe a couple, actually. Yeah, I would like that, yeah, too. We, we should, should do that. that for it's a sure. good conversation starter. Because either is. I'm right and we get to celebrate, or I'm really wrong and you get to make fun of me. Right. So everybody and, wins. And we, and we need to do one more than one guy, because the guy you did last year. I nailed it. I mean, I well, we don't know if you nailed it. We don't Malik know. Malik McDowell hasn't played. We don't know. You didn't write down in your notes could be off the right, field but, issue that no, doesn't no, but play. I but I nailed the evaluation Sims told yes, me yes. Sims told me that I was right in oh my yeah film a lot study. of your assessment was right yes. and we're gonna work in our guy I couldn't stand up we're but, gonna, but he we're didn't have top end talent yeah we're gonna work in our Iowa guys evaluations too oh yeah we Our do need to go through Iowa. that do you yeah. still have the packet we might need to him to email it to I us think again. I have the packet okay. uh, also uh, everything's looking good for us to have a new surprise NBA analyst. I don't want to say his name yet, but his people. Look, we believe boy. we believe we watch the NBA a lot. Oh boy! But we want. I want someone different. I don't want a traditional NBA person. I want someone that is an up and coming guy. We. I want him to make be our NBA analyst. So that's coming up. We still need to give you your personality test. And I'm thinking. I still got it. I think. Yeah, that might be next week. <laughs> Saved or the in week the old after. Gmail. It's there. Disc assessment. It's yeah, one of so my. Yeah, we want to give you an official disc assessment. Emails. And then it's it's almost time to start breaking down the draft. Yeah. So Sims and Lefko is never dying. Never. We have a ton of stuff. Never. Football never dies. Uh, Fendrick and I were in L.A. for like a week with the NBA All-Star. What you the were there all week? I was there, we there since from last Thursday. Thursday to Monday. Okay. For fr- I was there Friday yeah. to Monday. What Man. have you been doing? Gosh, not a lot. <laughs> Sitting on the couch. <laughs> yeah, you have an eyelash that's in your glasses You want right to get there. it for me or should I, I don't know. I can actually might get it. it. It's pretty Tell us there. what you've been doing. Uh, I've been daddy daycare, kids head off from school. I've been staying up late intoxicating myself way too much yeah uh, sleeping does it feel in. good like so for you the season's over like it you had your refresh yes. week it, it, it felt really good and then like i would say like early this week late last week i actually was like okay i start to i need a schedule <laughs> or something i need some <laughs> i can't do this are you still paying that like a lot of attention to nfl like of course yes you, you didn't take a week off oh no no that. i never like no yeah. i I'm, neither do i yeah I'm i'm taking w- first thing i do early. in the morning is when i open up the computer turn the tv on it goes right to all nfl stuff yeah uh it was it was fun to watch my kids watch me on levitard a few times oh because you're because at home. they were at home and i was at home and you'd go to the other room and or i'd go in the other room and then they would see yeah, a picture of me or whatever so that was funny uh yeah. but everything's been good man so we have orlando pace coming up we also have phil sims making his triumphant return Big to the boom. podcast um, what number are you for Levitar? Uh, what did you do on Wednesday? I think I did when today, today. I did it was twenty, I wanna say it was and Case was? Keenum or twenty one. And I can't remember. I gotta pull it up exactly. But it was yesterday was Sam Bradford. Yeah. No, yesterday was Joe Flacco. At twenty one. At twenty one. How do they react to that? Just like everybody does. Oh, Super Bowl winning quarterback, <laughs> number twenty one. <laughs> uh, oh great. That's great. He won it's the, the same Super Bowl thing five time. years ago. That's right. I know, but we're still gonna so it's just it is what it is. I'm I'm gaining Lebetard's respect though. That's yeah. what I'm getting a lot of a lot of liking out of it. That argument sounds like something Bill Polian would have said. We're gonna get to that in a second. A lot uh, of teases today. A lot well, of things I, have, coming I wrote up. a lot of shit down. L.A. Another curse. Oh, there sorry. You have two. We're all over the place here. <laughs> it really makes me feel guilty. Uh, <laughs> L.A. What was the most memorable moment for you that oh, you could man. share with us? Most memorable moment for me that I can share. Why does he have such a nice glowing Jewish tan and yours is just this red blotch? Me? Yeah. I didn't wear any sunscreen on Sunday. <laughs> so you just have a red blotch. Uh, so I just have a red blotch all over my face. Yeah, I purposely got really burnt to last a nice tan for about a week and a half. Uh, most memorable moment, probably, I would say the... Being on the court after the dunk contest and just watching all of the like I walked onto the court 
just right past the security guards and just being of the there. actual dunk contest. The actual dunk contest, not the fake one on Sunday that you were hosting. Um, was, the, the, <laughs> damn. So, well, that's what you I actually right? thought the dunk contest that I hosted it was on actually Sunday awesome. was better when than the, guy, the dunk contest on Saturday. When the guy jumped over the bike, I was like, yes. this is the real deal. Yeah. Uh, but just being down on the court, seeing Westbrook, LeBron. Actually, LeBron wasn't there. Uh, all the celebrities interacting with each other, like Chance the Rapper and Kevin Hart hanging out. Uh, with Amigos. Yeah. yeah there's, just, there's never that many people that close. It's better than Radio Row. Because Radio Row is kind of like the B-listers, So I think. Super Bowl, for me, compared to NBA All-Star, Super Bowl's like a really good party, and like there's some good people invited, but you're kind of just like looking at the party. NBA Where All-Star NBA is another All-Star level. NBA All-Star is like if all of the really cool people showed up to the party. Right. Like all those Super Bowl parties I went to, I was like, there's 12 cool people here. And every All-Star game I went to, I was like, even the, even the 70th, even the Blake Bortles ranked coolest person here is like the lead designer for Vera Wang. Right. You're like, they're still really freaking cool. more h- high society coolness. I got to see Kanye perform a song live. Wow. Which I had heard from an Adidas guy, don't tell anyone, wink, wink, Kanye's coming. He did one song, Father Stretch My Hands, and it was... It was like that one song. I was like, that was enough. Like, I had never seen Kanye in person. That was really cool. I was hosting a dunk contest for Bleacher Report. We had he an did a great event job. in L.A. I was just messing with him. But one of the guys that was playing in the three-on-three celebrity league yep. was T.O. Right. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure I gas him up right now and get him on my side. And I was like, he's one of the greatest NFL players that's ever lived. Give it up. And I went, like, on for, like, 20 more seconds. Terrell Owens. He walks right over, pissed, and goes, it's Terrell. It's not Terrell. It's Terrell. And I was like, give it up for T.O. I'm calling him T.O. The rest of He was so mad. And I, it made me think at first. I was like, Terrell, Terrell, who cares? Mama didn't name him Terrell. Exactly. But it's more if, if you called me a dame all the time, I'd be like, that's not my fucking name. But I, it's another curse. He wants Terrell, not Terrell. He wants Terrell, not Terrell. Yes. And it's just too hard for me. So I just call. And too hard I, for you. Professional big fucking mouth. Too hard for you. Sorry. King. Three. The transition king. The yeah. transition king. Three curses. I right. was over at the basketball court when Lefko was introducing himself to the crowd. Oh, and yeah, he yeah. introduced himself Woo. as the L-E-F-K-O-E man. Oh, and it was just gosh. dead silence. I don't like, care. Nobody said it. They were like, care. what is this guy doing? <laughs> I don't even care. The other thing that was crazy is uh, one of the nights we had a. The Bleach Report had a party at Jimmy Goldstein's house, which is really cool. You know that old guy that sits courtside at the NBA games? I've been on the beach with him. Yep. Yep. Wears the hats sat and the fucking jackets. I sat very close to him at some basketball games yeah. courtside, too. So I went up to him with my girlfriend, and of course he was like, I'm talking to him, and he's staring at my girlfriend the entire time because he's old Jimmy Goldstein. And I was like, Jimmy, it's crazy. We actually have a mural of you painted at our Bleach Report offices. Right. And he goes, I actually have a picture of the mural in my house. And I'm like, all right, Jimmy, great talking to you. I got to go. But later that night, we went to this club called Avenue, and, like, James Harden came in for, like, six minutes. Right. Do you know who the most popular guy was at this club in L.A.? Jimmy Goldstein. Guy Fieri. <laughs> guy, guy, so disappointing. Dude, g- no, but uh, this is the thing about Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri is the food guy? Yes, right? with the blonde, the blonde hair. hair. right. Diners, drive-ins, and dives. He good, won't good watch idea. that. Yeah, I did. I did watch it until I got a heart attack from watching it, and I couldn't take it anymore. It's always like, what if we add more what cheese? What if we added, like, nine pieces of bacon to the ten bacon there with the barbecue sauce but and the hamburger? Famous Sorry. people, celebrities, and normal people yeah. all react to Guy Fieri like, oh, shit, Guy Fieri's here. But then you watch Guy Fieri, and you go... He, in his own mind, is the coolest motherfucker ever. Like, damn, I cursed again. He's a cool dude. Yeah. And so he walked in, everyone's, like, taking pictures of Guy Fieri. I just thought that was crazy. Uh, and I saw Black Panther, and Black Panther was amazing. Yeah, you like the movie? Yes. I got to go to it. The kids want to go. My little boy does, at least. Yes, it's it's awesome. It's a great movie, and then, like, culturally it means so much. But right. it's just a really good superhero I'm movie. I'm a big fan of his, and I don't even know his name. Michael Jackie B. Robinson. Jordan? Right. No, 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 that's Chadwick Boseman. Uh, yes, yes, Michael Jackie Robinson. He also Robinson's did James awesome. Brown. Yes. He was amazing in that as well. There's right. another movie, too. The other thing that happened, though, I didn't get to see Fergie's anthem the day of. Oh. And I only got to see it after. Right. And what's funny is, is when you listen to it. Yeah. Like, I still think she's doing a good job. Like 
So at that point, I'm watching, and I'm going, you know what? They call it a rendition. Anybody can do it how they want. I see what she's going for here. And at that point, I'm still going, get it, Fergie. Like, make it blues. And then I realize that she can't sing. What's so People are roasting her, and they're saying it's like the worst anthem ever. And what I'm realizing from all this, Fergie doesn't have any fans. Like, if Beyonce would have done this or Taylor Swift would have done it, the Beehive or the Swifties would have been like, I stand for her. Who defended Fergie? Like, nobody defended her. People are like, it's the worst rendition ever. And then no one was like, I like Fergie. Like, Fergie just doesn't have that support. No, she's just cool. She's just Fergie. I, w I never listened to Fergie and was like, man, that is so. She can sing. She's got, she can hit notes I'd never hit, hit, heard hit before. I Did mean, you think it was the worst thing you'd ever heard? Uh, it was not worse than Roseanne. No, it's not the worst thing I ever heard. You've heard a lot of national anthems. I've heard a ton you of that. I hate when they do the national anthems like that, first of all. Just sing the Just fucking sing song. Okay, sorry. Sorry, Do you like, do you like okay. when they okay. like play a musical instrument instead of singing? I don't, I don't I mind love it. That. I, I like prefer more that. of a traditional sense. The reason Whitney Houston's anthem is so amazing is because she stayed with in tune of and what the song it. is. Fergie had to change the song because she can't sing. So she said, where can I make this like I'm talking loudly, but we'll count it as singing. Yeah. And that's what and it that's is. That's what we ended up with. And, and then she ended sounds with, like Marilyn let's go Monroe play basketball. Happy birthday to JFK. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought it yeah. was too. Yeah. But are we not doing numbers today? Oh, oh shit. Good host you no, are. We are getting to that. Getting okay. I wanted to establish where we were, and then we go to 54s. <laughs> I was just making Did sure. you have a 54 for us, I don't have us, a 54, Josh? but then we're like 20 minutes in here. I yeah, haven't heard about it. You're horrible. You stink. Sometimes I like to change it up. Good. Do you have any 54s for us? Andy Hedden. Do you know who Andy Hedden is? No, nope, not on the list. Number 54 on the New York Giants. Get that crap. Okay, number 54. Avery Williamson. Yes, he is a Williams, free agent. Williams, 54. Brandon Marshall yep. is a 54. Denver Broncos. Uh, Brian Urlacher is a 54. Yep. Um, hmm. Let me think if there's any other 54s that I played with off the top of my head. It's an amazing number. It's a great to me. It's one of the all-time great NFL numbers. Really, 54? Yeah, it's I feel good. like it's just had a lot. Like if you okay, here are the guys in the Go NFL ahead. that wear 54 right now. Here are the lesser known, and I still think they're pretty good. Jalen Smith and everything he's overcome. Right. Cassius Marsh, Shaq, Shaq Thompson with the Panthers, yep. Levante David with the Bucks, Brandon Marshall, Avery Williamson, Olivier Vernon, Melvin Ingram, Eric Kendricks, Dante Hightower, Bobby Wagner. Of those five, Vernon, Ingram, Kendricks, Hightower, or Wagner, you can only pick one. Who would you pick? I'm taking Ingram right now. Ingram, yeah. Ingram is at a the prime of his career and definitely in the conversation for one of the five best pass rushers in the sport. Who would you take second? Wagner, Hightower, Kendricks, or Vernon? <sighs> Wagner? Yeah, Wagner. Yes. I'm a big fan of Dante Hightower, but the injury stuff is just it's, it's a tiebreaker for me also, where I give it to Wagner. Just not a, no, he is very versatile. He is. He is versatile. All right, so all-time older it's guys. Size versatility. Randy White. Right. Big Damn. time 54. Can't believe I missed that. Shit. Uh, Chuck Halley, Super Bowl champ for the Cowboys Super Bowl in the MVP, 60s and Super 70s. Super Bowl five. They, Chuck Halley? Yeah. He was the Damn. defensive MVP on a team that lost the Super Bowl. He's the only one ever. 16-13, they lost to the Colts. He was the defensive MVP. And you had no notes as you were saying so, so no, that. That was no, good. Yes. He's also a five-time All-Pro. He is. A, you don't see a lot of five-time All-Pros. He's a big white guy, I can tell you uh, that. Reggie McKenzie wore 54 when he played. I did not know So that. did Marty Schottenheimer. Huh. Titan's a good number. Brian Waters, the guard for a long time. Was great a one. Great yep. guard. Uh, some random uh, 2000s uh, linebackers. Andre Davis, Nate Wayne. Andre Davis, my old teammate. And the lumberjack, Jeremiah Trotter. Yeah. Love JT. Trot. Love Trot. And then all-time great linebacker, 54s. I don't know if Chris Spielman is an all-time great. He was good. Teddy Bruschi. He's a legend. Brian Erlacher and Zach Thomas. Yeah, that's pretty good. I forgot about Bruschi and Zach Thomas there. Nomination from Gabe, Araldus Chapman. Ooh, oh, good one, Gaber. Flamethrower. Gomez coming in from left field with that one. Uh, we always do Second Amendment. Kyle Shanahan's our favorite coach in the NFL. Uh, in terms, there are six teams in the NFL right now that have the most free agent cap room. Right. 
The Browns have by far the most, 110 million. You have four teams over 70. Well, they did. The 49ers had the most, right? Right. Until Garoppolo's contract. And so the four teams that have 70 million or more, right. Colts, Niners, Jets, and Bucks. Yeah. So the fact that the Niners are still in the top five, they're actually right. number three, even after paying Garoppolo is crazy. Yep. And then the Texans have 63, and there's a drop off. Those are the, the top six in terms of money. Yeah. We keep getting questions from people, how would you rebuild the Niners? Mm. And the question that I would ask you for our Kyle Shanahan topic is, they're third in free agency. Which position, which guy do you think that it's worth spending a lot of money on that's not currently on the Niners? Oh, okay. Hmm. Can I pull up my free agent 100%. list here? 100%. Well, I wish Take you a second here, pull up the teams. I wish you would have told me this before we started this, just so I could have had it ready. Um. The 49ers, though, just off the top Yeah, where of would my you head. want Kyle to spend his money position-wise? The, I mean, the secondary, this cornerback play, I think is certainly one area. And there's a lot of good cornerbacks there that are going to be available. Um, hold on, I'm just getting it here. So that would be one. The next place I look at just for Kyle knowing him is it's got to be O-line, and he needs another elite wide receiver. I'm just trying to think of which one I should go to here. What do you need, a list of free agents? Yeah. Just I got you. Stand by here, Ghost Rider. I have. Like, Here's a free agency tracker. You need p what position you want. Um, I think I'm – all right, good. Let's just use that if that's okay. I'm going to give credit to him. His name is Evan Silva. He works for Roto World. I use him for so much of my stuff. I think Evan Silva is great, and he went out and ranked. I'd be curious if Sim's thoughts of these rankings align with him. They're definitely going to be better than Bill Polian's Yeah, rankings. well, we know that. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll start off right here. Okay, I got it. I'm good. Don't worry. All right, all I got right, your so, cornerbacks pulled up. Okay, Whatever you need. I'm right. I'm on cornerbacks. So, I mean, if I was going to look at cornerbacks right off the top of my bat, uh, head. guards and centers. Yo, where's the rest of it? Second page here, buddy. I got oh. it pulled up for you, though. Just take look a look at Josh's. Okay, yep. fine, 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 fine. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, dokie. All right, so Tremaine Johnson. I mean, I just have a hard time thinking that there's the Rams are going to let him go. I mean, he would be the number one pick, certainly, for a anybody in the secondary, I think. Yeah. Uh, but my thing there, just with him real quick, is just Wade Phillips, I don't think he can really run his defense or wants to run his defense without a Tremaine Johnson. Right. He needs his keep to leave, and that's what he would be. So that would be, of course, I think the guy everybody's going to look at. Now, you get after that conversation there. There is some interesting ones. Malcolm Butler is going to be there. And Malcolm Butler, you know my thoughts. I think he is a top 10 corner in yeah. football or at least around and that area. And he'll have a chip on his shoulder for he, sure. He is, and he's going to want to prove himself. Uh, he is up there as far as, far as the guys I look at as being – top-notch talent after that Kyle Fuller's good I'm not sold on the Kyle Fuller thought as of right now I mean yes he had a good year last year I get that um all right so the corners are there what about wide receivers wide receivers okay the first guy right off the top of the list Allen Robinson that's concerning to me I'm not going to mess with that so isn't Travis I, Benjamin a free agent uh does Travis, he already have that with uh, No, Travis Goodwin? Benjamin's not. Yeah, and he has it. Benjamin, yeah. I don't think, is a free agent. So what kind of wide receiver would they look for? He's got the Travis Benjamin and a good one. I think he's going to look more for his Pierre Garçon in his prime type of guy. Tough underneath. Right, like is a Jarvis Landry in that conversation, well, he just got right? Franchise he tag. did get franchised. Everything I know, too, him. is they are trying to trade him. I know that. We're going to get to that in a second. Right, okay. What other wide receivers pop out then? Marquise Lee is, I think, another guy he'd pro he would for look sure. at. For sure. Certainly, because he can do a little bit of everything. Everything, right? He can be that guy that you can go, oh, we can put him outside and he can beat you deep, but he's good at running the routes over the middle. He's kind of tough. He can make people miss. He can yeah. run some of those option routes. Do they also go after a linebacker with the Reuben Foster stuff going I, I on? I mean, you have to. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. That was the problem with the Reuben Foster draft pick, right? Yeah. I mean, the Reuben Foster draft pick. This is we knew this like so. I, of course, I feel bad because it's my friend Kyle, but at the same time, I mean, you knew the risk you were you taking. You knew the he knew the risk. But it's he was better taking. they took it. They better they took him at thirty one and not three. Exactly right. Because they almost did that. Definitely. Uh, but but Ruben Foster, I think, with between the health concerns and the off the field issues, he's he's in big trouble. Certainly. Now after that, as far as linebacker, you know, Zach Brown's certainly going to fit that Hell scheme yeah. if they want to pay that money for the Jacksonville type of defensive scheme. Yes, that will work too. Um, and then jumping around to like O lineman too. We haven't talked about that because I do think that's a position of need. They got a center. They got one. They got two tackles. I would love one's coming to the see end. them get Justin Pugh. Pugh would be their kind of guy, right? 
like the shorter mobile plays multiple positions yes. like Kyle Shanahan. He, really would, he would love him to be his guard. That would be a right. perfect guard for the Shanahan scheme. Certainly. So he'd be a guy right off the bat. I'd look at Nate Solder. That's not going to happen. I'm just looking at some other names up there. It's not a great list for right. offense alignment. Uh, but I just think those are the areas we'd look at. They're going to get a difference-making receiver, a difference-making corner, and then they're going to round out their guard position, I would think, in free Makes agency. Sense. That would be the most the most sensible thing. You mentioned the Jaguars there, and you've also been a guest on the Pardon My Take podcast. Well, they had Blake Bortles on. Oh, baby. Have oh, you listened baby. to this yet? I did. I listened to it. All right, so yep. I'm going to play it now. This is uh, Blake Bortles on Pardon My Take at Barstool talking about you we we had chris sims come into the studio just so we could fight him yeah how did that go I, i'm not gonna lie i saw that was a little bit upset about that so we brought him in just to have your back to his face yeah, and just, just to be to like you're wrong him, yeah yeah just call him a piece of shit he was he came in he was so nervous he thought we were gonna jump him is that true <laughs> yeah no. yeah no i would have liked to have been there for that that would have been awesome <laughs> yeah. it was he, a, so yeah. chris basically walked back a little bit what he said he was saying i don't that, like, think he really he walked it back i think they're being polite inflammatory and then he got trapped into like having to defend it all the time and so it turned into a thing that he didn't think was going to turn into a thing where he would be like the nation's premier blake bortles hater you've like said Skip that Palis before like but the nation's premier lebron james hater so we just had to put him in his place real quick getting compared and to he, Skip. You know, he rolled over he let us scratch his belly and then he thing. left mm-hmm. I appreciate them Marjorie. like, oh sorry. No, keep going. That was it, right? No, there's, there's, there's more. A bit more. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, and I don't know how to play it now. Appreciate that. Yeah, that was like that's really the only one that's like bothered me. Right. Just because oh. it's like when some when somebody else has tried to do it and um, didn't have really any success at doing it, and those, but they at least have an understanding of how hard it is, and you know it's a challenge and all that, and then to then turn around and go on TV and talk bad about somebody trying to do it, you know, I just I don't really understand that that thought yeah, process. But, I agree. You know more. So my my thing is, well, here, well, let's you go first. This is you're reacting. To well, it. I, you know, first of all, he's upset that I've made good points and proven himself, right? That's what he's basically saying. Like, hey, he's the first one that's gone on there and like made points, and everybody's going, yeah, you're right, okay. Well, again, I'm, this is not personal against Blake Bortles. I am sorry, Blake Bortles. I am sorry. Uh, I appreciate like PMT kind of trying to ease him into that yes. and maybe not make me look as bad. Um, they did say that you rolled over and that they made you feel bad and you wussed out, which that, I don't think you did. No, I definitely did not. And, and nor was I scared of that. I mean, I would I, I, PMT. I mean, big cat, uh, jump me next time. Let's see what happens. Okay, <laughs> let's how see many, what happens. How many big cats would I, it take? One big cat, one know. PMT to me, take you. Both of them together, they're gonna they got to put in some work. Okay, I'm just telling you. And I truly like them. You know that. Yeah. So, uh, and I actually texted with Big Cat a little to earlier today, too. Yeah. But regardless, release the text. I feel bad again about the Blake Portals thing. It is interesting to me that obviously he's heard it. Apparently. And it does bother him. Yeah. Um, and I feel bad about that as well. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just doing my job. Here, and, and that is my point right. is for Blake to say, I do, it hurts me. He's the one that upsets me because he tried to do it, didn't do it well, and he should know how hard it is. And then I would go, exactly. Because you're not – this fraternity of quarterbacks, you're not supposed to be like, that guy sucks. But for everybody out there, I'm not going to say anything because I'm going to protect him. That's literally the number one thing we stand for is we don't want to be friends with anybody because we just want to be super honest to everyone that's listening. Yes, right. And the problem that we've always said is all of these motherfuckers want to be friends with the athletes. Right. We don't want to be people's friends. And everyone's taking it like you're being personal, but it has nothing to do with personal. No. And the other thing is, they were like, oh, yeah, he was just trying to say something inflammatory. Never once did you go, hey, what could I say that could get us a lot of attention? No. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't It wasn't no, to it get was attention. it was pure, total, 100 football assessment. I was yes. getting annoyed that the fact that I was constantly having to – assess why what Jacksonville that's where it came from I just couldn't take it anymore and I was finally like are you guys I you know you know me it just got yeah. to the, I got to my wits end where I was like are you kidding me I mean we know the problem with Jacksonville don't yes. I mean come on it's as obvious as there could be it and just it, it always goes back to for me I watch these other shows and you begin to realize that they all have narratives and they all like are friendly with people and they're not giving the truth and that's the problem I think with so much sports coverage in America is it's all nonsense and it's these guys that go home at night and go what could i talk about tomorrow that could go viral 
we don't give a shit about viral. No. We just want to talk football right. at a very accurate level. Or what, and people who can think I, it's personal. Who can I stay in their good graces yes. with so I can name drop them every now and then? I right. have no interest in that. None. Like, Zero. Me, me and Sims, like, they want to, look. Bleach Report wants to do big stuff with us. They want to launch a show with us, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And the thing is, is we're going to meet a lot of these people, but I don't think that's going to change how we talk about people because that's our job. Like, I I think that – I've always said this. If you could admit you're biased, then you're not biased. Right. And I think no one's admitting they're biased, and they're all really biased. I don't know. That's just – when I heard Blake say, I wish he was easier on me, I'd be like, well, then you – if you can't handle Chris Sims – Invite the pressure. Yeah. It's a, it's a fascinating topic. I Yes. I, first of all, he shouldn't be listening to me. He shouldn't even care about me either way. He's got to realize – he knows there's people out there that are critical of his play, and he has to get better. And uh, like I've said a million times, it is not personal. Again, I understand how hard it is. I grew up in it, and – Look where I am now. Okay? Were you ever personally affected by something someone in the media said, something as specific as this? No. no. Because no. he I just re- said one person, one thing that he's saying is screwing him up. Yeah, I, I no, I never was. Did I Did I go out before a game and uh, uh, watch ESPN and my, they were going in a segment going, who has the most pressure on them this week? And I turned on the TV and it was Mike Dicka and he goes, Chris Sims did. And I went, damn, do I got pressure on me today? <laughs> I was like, I guess it is kind of a big game. I have lost my first two starts, and we were a playoff team. I better get going here. Damn. Uh, so do you hear noise at times? Certainly. But I, was I going on the field that day or in the locker room going, damn, Mike Dicka says I'm under pressure. What am I going to do? No. By the time I got to the fucking field, I was like, damn, Gruden's already yelling him at me, <laughs> yelling at me, and we haven't even started the game. He's already asking me if I'm on a check. And then I run out on the field, and I go, Holy crap, they're big. They're going to be coming after me all game. Oh, wait, what did Mike Dicka say about me? Uh, so to me, that's where you have to be able to block that stuff out. Yeah, I think it's like when you meet a famous person and then you see that they check their social a lot and you realize they're not that famous. The reason we the don't real go to the famous... Combine, the reason we don't go to the Senior Bowl, we're not going to be able to network. I don't give a damn I don't that meet some anybody. Johnny Offensive Coordinator who I talked bad about during the season, now he wants to come over and be friends with me so I don't talk bad about him anymore. Yeah. I don't give a shit, for yeah. one. We're the players damn, podcast. This swear yeah, thing. yeah, we're up to we're like ten curse words. The rails. Okay. Other thing is, we're missing the point. What are they going to do with Blake Bortles? That's the real point. Jacksonville might screw up their chance to win a Super Bowl and multiple because yes. they've boxed themselves in the fifth year option, Blake Bortles corner. I'm That's the comical thing, and they think they think like people are going to be like it's going to ruin their locker room. It's going to. I'm telling you, it will ruin their locker room because there's going to be guys going. Damn, I'm one of the best at my position in the sport, and I'm being and paid so is he. And one so is he. third of what he is being paid, yeah. and he's the worst at his position in the sport. Yeah, that's going to be an issue. I gotta think they have a plan B. I'm really interested to see how this whole physical thing plays be, out. They can't talk badly because they know right now we might be stuck with him. Right. We have to see if and he can don't pass the ruin physical. His confidence. And of course, he got surgery because he knows I don't want to pass my physical because nobody else is gonna pay me 19 million a year except for Jacksonville right now. Exactly. So that's where it's interesting. And are they gonna make a play for somebody else? That's it where would I think. be the biggest disappointment if our guy Coughlin went to Jacksonville. And Bortle starts for two years. Yeah. Because for me, I thought that's what that was going to fix. Yeah. I thought Marone and Coughlin were were Captain Honesty and General Honesty. Yeah. And I thought it was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I went up the rails. No, so. it was perfect. Yeah. Uh, so we previewed franchise tag. It started. One of the guys that you didn't think was going to get tagged did. Jarvis Landry, $16 million wide receiver tag. And it came out in Pro Football Talk. You're saying it now. The reason you tag this early is if you want to move him. I saw Eric Weddle tweeted out, no, because he wanted him on the Ravens. I don't know if Landry's worth $16 million. You've been very vocal that you do not believe he's an open, like a number one guy. No. Do you think, though, that someone will move pieces for Jarvis Landry? Yeah, I I mean, a team like Baltimore, I think, might, even though I want to be like, why? I don't, you know. Well, they clearly can't draft receivers. No, they clearly can't. They really can't. You know, it just, I don't know what their plan of attack is there. Um, Six. I don't really understand the whole what they did there. I really don't. I understand they got him because they probably want to go, okay, then we can use him as trade bait. I don't think anybody wants to sign him to the type of contract he's looking for, right? I've heard numbers yeah. thrown out there like he was looking for like four years, $58 million. He has Again, by far the most catches by any player in their first four years in the NFL. Yes. Like the most. Great. But we have to look at really what he's doing. 
Right. Five it's, yard shake and shake. I love defi- like, I, I love the guy. But I'm going to give my not friend Mike one. Lombardi he said a great comment to me when okay. we were in this conversation about him. And I, he, it really sums it up really well because I, I love when Mike says little things like that. He goes, I like Jarvis Landry when the ball's in his hand. Mm. And I was like, that's the way to put it. He's exactly right. Yes, you like him when the ball's in his hand, but he can't get open without the ball in his hand. Right. That's the problem. Or he needs a system to get him open. He is not going to be the guy like we've talked about a million times to be out there on the number on the you know, island and going to be people. That's I just have, not what he I is. I have my basketball player comparison. He's below 100. He is not in the top 100 in yards per catch. Mm. Jason Witten has more yards per catch than Jarvis Landry. He's Andre Iguodala. He's a guy that was never the number one on the Sixers, right. but he's the number five on the Warriors, and he's an incredible number five. He is. And he could have moments where he's like the MVP. Yeah. Like if Landry goes to a Kyle system, right. we, all, we, we said this when he wasn't a free agent. If he went to the Patriots, he would be used masterfully. Right. But he's not the number one on a team. No. But – I like the way he carries himself, yeah. but I think they the franchise tag because you, right. how his salary negotiations went last, last offseason. Yeah. Didn't go well, had off-the-field stuff, and then like they tabled it. This is an indecisive franchise move where they go, maybe we could trade him. And something. the other thing I'll say that just throw that into it is, you know, Devontae Parker's had an injury history, so True. maybe that scares them a little bit. Kenny Stills hasn't necessarily lived it's up to the contract he got. It's a make or break year for Tannehill. It's a make or break year for right. Gase. So maybe they're kind of just going, we'll see what it is one more year and right. ride with them. Either way, or they get the trade they want, and they go, fine, we're done with them, and we can move on. You also said that you expected the Cowboys to tag Demarcus Lawrence. Yes. That looks like it's going to happen. They are so shallow at the position, they have to keep that guy. Have to, and he's... Am I missing anybody? I mean, he's the, he's the biggest difference maker on their defensive side of the football right now. I don't think you can argue that. He put himself in the category the second half of the year where yes. he's definitely one of the five best pass rushers in the sport. And if he can just stay healthy, uh, yes. So that made a ton of sense. Second I'm year in a row that. where he's really taken it up a notch in the second half of the season, right. which is rare. Right. Uh, Doug Martin released. Yeah. It made me go back to the preseason. When they were playing, the Bucks were playing the Jags, and John Gruden was like talking all this trash about how they don't like Doug Martin, and it made me realize like there's a lot of stuff going on with this guy, and he had that one year with like 1,400 rushing yards, and I don't know if we're ever going to see that again. One year it was a two P D, D test that he's failed. Was that it? Yeah, I mean it's something like that. It's it's one or it's definitely one. I thought it was two. Uh, Yes, he's going to be signing somewhere for a very low veteran yeah. minimum. That's just the way it, the way it is. There's a lot of talented running backs in the Man. league right now, and there's going to be more coming. So not surprised by that move at all. There's not a lot of people with the talent of Andrew Luck, mm-hmm. who apparently is not throwing footballs right now, but he's throwing objects that are heavier than footballs, yeah, which right. is a great sign. Right. And he's not getting another surgery. That time has passed, and he feels relieved. Good. Do you believe we're going to see Andrew Luck ever like Andrew Luck again? <sighs> I do believe, yes, I do. I, I guess I, I, it's definitely skeptical. I'm worried, but I think, yes, it's going to turn out. Just because at least he's at the age where his body should recover. Throwing heavy objects is not necessarily the greatest thing either. I don't know if I like put any stock into that to go, oh, wow, right, right. It's, it's not, not like about go, it's that. It's not like going to the batting cage with a ring on your bat and like working on bat speed well, with like a heavier. Well, certainly can build some strength, yes. But I think at the end of the day, what's going to hurt his arm and what's hurting his arm is its arm's ability, the torque, because it's a football and it's a little lighter object. And then really what makes it is the arm speed that you can create because it's not a weighted ball or whatever. Mm. And it's those muscles that have to stop your arm and shoulder from decelerating after you let go of the ball is where a lot of times quarterbacks have problems. Do you think he starts week one next year? I do. Yes, I do. I, I just I'm a, I, I'm, I'm going to be, of course, all eyes on this situation because – we like were said, right all along. We both assumed that he was not playing at all this year. And the story just and about how apparently his buddy people from in India- Stanford like did the surgery. It's all very concerning. The fact that what he did escape to Germany at one point didn't yeah. he? Right. 
So, uh, yeah, I don't know where he is. Has there ever be been any uh, another injury like this or another injury saga like this that you can remember? I mean, Peyton a little bit, right? With the, the, neck. the neck. That was certainly an right. issue. When he signed with the Broncos, the question was, will Peyton ever really play be able again? To, yeah. yeah, because he was – I was in the – you know, there's stories that he was in the backyard and, like, trying to throw a 10-yard to Eli and wasn't doing it. Drew Brees went something similar with, with the, the shoulder. shoulder in San Diego there before he went to – you know, almost went to Miami and then went to New Orleans. Uh and then I would say Chris Sims' spleen exploding. Yeah, maybe that, right? That's a, that's pretty up there. Jake Delhomme had the sh- had the elbow like Got a it. pitcher gets. He had Tommy John, which is really rare for a football player. I was just saying, player. this one feels just particularly mysterious to me, but I guess those other ones were. I want him to more not worry about the weighted throws. He needs to be able to throw an object 150 times as hard as he can and have his arm be able to take that torque, right? And to me, the way to go there, if you listen to any cutting-edge technology, is tennis. Tennis would be the way to go. You ever notice how a tennis player never has an elbow or arm problem, but they hit an object as Time hard out. as they can all the time? They have tennis elbow. Well, occasionally, but it's not as much as you would think for guys that hit a thousand balls a day right. because they don't let go of the object. It's and that's like really pitchers in baseball. Like p- pitchers started doing that where they have these fake handles or a fake ball. You ever seen them in the war- in the bullpen where they hold on to the, the – like it's almost like it looks like a beanbag the yeah. whole time because that's what we're right. doing. They oh. hold that beanbag because it's the stress, the ultimate stress on the arm is when the ball is let go. And you're squeezing nothing. And you're not even, or your arm's relaxed, but it's still going really fast. And then it's going, oh, I got to stop and hold back a second. It's interesting. Okay. This doesn't sound like anything Ice and Stim can't fix. I'm no doctor, <laughs> but. Just. I think the reason, though, we've never, if this feels unique to me with Andrew Luck, is for the first part of his career, the kid was undestructible. Right. Like, not, Took a beating. O- not only was he taking a beating, but he would get up and go, hey, great hit. Yeah, yeah. You're awesome. Right. And you were like, nothing can stop this right. kid. And now it seems like nothing can fix this kid. And so we went from one extreme to the other, and we're just sitting here going, timeout, he was the next face. He was the next big contract. Like, he was the one that was going to blow away everything. And now we have nothing. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy to see a star like that. Right. I just remembered my favorite memory from All Star Weekend. Okay. As LeBron was getting uh, the trophy after the All Star game on Sunday night, I turn around and Odell Beckham, I'm on the court again. Odell Beckham is behind me, jumping up and just hanging on the rim. And then he would let go, come back down, jump back up, grab on the rim. Must have done it three or four times. Just having fun. Just having fun. Just jumping around. LeBron is 20 feet away getting the trophy, and Odell is showing everyone that he can jump up That's and hang on the rim. Really That's a famous. different class of stars yeah. right when there. When you're a star, you could do whatever. Gosh. And he would like, rip off a toupee. Yeah. He had a lot of jewelry on. Uh, it was I'm sure. He was weighted, he's weighted down. He and, was. It was like he was wearing like a jacket. He's getting a little hamstring butt explosion. He's uh, trying to get up there. We're going to be a little late <laughs> to your dad, and he's going to get pissed. But I will say that another staple of this podcast has been my disdain for certain broadcasters. Mm-hmm. Charles Davis has felt my wrath many times. He's my least favorite color commentator. I'm just being honest. Uh, the other guy that I've said for a long time is Bill Polian. Yeah. I use him all the time. Mm-hmm. He has come out and said that Lamar Jackson should switch to a wide receiver. And then he also had some comments about Nick Foles and trade value. And I just want you guys to listen to the pauses from the other people. It's a really weird setup where they have four people standing in like a box formation. And listen how no one says anything after Bill Polian talks for the first time. What would it take to get Nick out of Philly? For if a team wanted him. Mm. First think? of all, I wouldn't even take the phone call for less than two ones and two twos. That's the, that's the open. And then we'll go from there. This guy just won the Super Bowl, for goodness sake. Not to mention Nick's going to be happy to stay. In real after pretty after is there a team out there? So then later he goes and Riddick's like, so then you would ask me if I would do that and I would say no, so this is dumb. And then the only good thing that Bill Polian said is he, he called Nick Foles an icon. And that was the only thing I, I agreed with where he said, if you're in a football locker room, this guy won a Super Bowl, you've said this too. If you keep him around, it could be an issue. Mm-hmm. Like, it could be an issue. But I just think it's funny. We're talking about Peyton Manning and stuff. How do I gracefully say that sometimes it's time to stop listening to people? Like, there are certain I, There's people- a lot of old executives. Like, you know, how does Ernie Accorsi call the shots for the New York Giants? 
How does Charlie Casserly name the GM for the Jets? They had no success for like the last decade of their career because they were doing things in an older fashioned way. All of their comments seem archaic, and yet people are running with these guys and their stories and their takes all the time. And I just don't know why we're still listening to these because they did it once. They did it. So it, it's Peyton again, Manning fell in his lap. I just it, it, listen. Bill Polian did a lot of good things. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not going to discredit he's a Hall that. Of Famer. Yes, I mean doing the Buffalo Bills, the Indianapolis Colts. He built some great teams, <clears throat> but just because he did that doesn't mean he's well versed in the league now. I mean, how many times have we, we've talked about him even through the free agency period and some of the draft evaluations and things he said over the last few years, where we've been like, damn. His number one, who was our guy that we— Denard Robinson. No, it was not Denard Robinson. It was an, a guy that played on the Raiders. It was Moore. Uh, he played on the Tennessee Volunteers with my brother. Right. Um, DeMontre Moore. Not DeMontre Moore, but it's something like that. But he basically said it was the number one free agent wide receiver out there. Dem it's something like Demarius Moore? Denarius Moore. Denarius Moore. He said he was the number one free agent receiver on the market. He didn't even get signed by a team. He never played in the NFL again. I mean, so he's had a lot of moments like that. And, yeah, Nick Foles is going to command the greatest trade price in the history of any player in football? Come he on. He responded to that by saying that's what they traded for RG3. And I was like, RG3 hadn't even played in the league yet. It was like a, a draft trade. And that was Dan trade. Snyder doing it by himself, like, and not even including the Shanahans who were supposed to be able to the do that. The problem is, though, is now I have my Philadelphia friends being like, man, if we only get a three, and now it's all suddenly disappointing. And Jimmy Garoppolo, who's better than Nick Foles on every fucking day of the week, okay, and twice on Sunday, if he only gets a second rounder, then why wouldn't they be, hey, listen, ask for more, certainly. Yeah. But I don't think you're going to get much more than a second and maybe a, another pick down the road somewhere. Yeah. I just have a hard time believing that. I just, I just don't understand how this is still a thing. Like, here we are, and, like, Chris Sims gets deemed as someone that's, like, going for headlines and saying crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we have an actual person that is incidentally saying crazy things. And we're like, well, what do you think about this? And I'm like, this is insane. I feel like I'm taking crazy insane. pills. Insane. And, and, again, like, my dad, we, we should have this conversation with my Let's dad. Call him up. Yeah, Let's call, call him. up Phil Sims right now. Because my dad is one that doesn't think the Eagles will or should trade Foles. I do. You know, I just we we were different there because I think like they're asking for big problems. If Carson Wentz isn't ready to start game one and you guys are four and oh with Nick Foles, are you oh, telling man. me they're gonna bench Nick Foles? No. No way. No chance. Then what are you gonna do with oh. Carson Wentz? There hey he big is. big guy. Big guy. Oh Thanks. well, where have you two been? Hey, thanks for spreading uh spending some time with us today and your son. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know you guys were bored and didn't have nothing to talk about, so you said, Oh, let's drag uh, uh Mr. Sims into this. You're the big fucker. You are the big fucker. <laughs> no, 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 we don't we, we don't care. we don't fuck that way. We're we're having a good conversation actually, and I'd like to hear your take on yeah, this. Yeah, I, I think the perfect person really, to ask. Really, you guys are saying something intelligent. Wouldn't that you know? Really fine to be good and uh, let me hear this. <laughs> All right, so I think it's perfect. We went and accurately said that the Eagles were the 1990-91 Giants and that Jeff Hostetler came in and all that stuff, and I thought the Giants handled that incorrectly back then. What do you think the Eagles should do? We were talking about Bill Polian's insanity, saying that they should ask for two firsts and a second for Nick Foles, which is just out of this world wrong. <laughs> uh, but I'm curious, can they exist with both quarterbacks on the roster? Oh what should God. they do? Two firsts and two seconds. Okay. <laughs> now, this is probably somebody that all these great people are talking about. Probably said he wasn't good enough to even be in the NFL last year. But now he gets on a good team. Oh, that's right, he had some experience and had some success. We forgot that. And a good team, good system, all that, and he wins the Super Bowl, and now he is as valuable as any quarterback in the league. I mean, ever. As valuable as any player in the history of the sport. Five weeks ago, we should really go back to see if they were, if they were talking about benching him for Nate Sudfeld. I mean, that's what we really should go to see. Well, yeah. go back and watch me. On the showtime, and I basically said when he got hurt, you don't have to, but I'm just, I just <laughs> said, can he, and somebody said it to me today when I was out this morning, you know, I heard you say that the Eagles can still win the Super Bowl with Nick Foles. I said, oh, really, did I say that? And he said, yeah. I said, yeah, I, I believe that because I knew he had had success. He has experience. He has some talent. Is it over-the-top talent? No. But the football team is good, and 
that generally gives you a good chance to win the Super Bowl. Okay, so this this is the this is the conundrum. Okay, is two ones and two twos. Hold it, I'm trying to get that out of my head. I know okay. it's it's unbelievable. Like, you know what? I tell you what, I, I the Eagles must be fielding calls right and left. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give me both ones and twos and uh, my first grandchild. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Jesus. But so what – I know I'm in the camp of I think they need to trade him, right? And I know you're in the camp a little bit of you don't think they should. My no, big do thing, not trade him. Okay, my big thing is, though, this. Like, let's just say Carson Wentz isn't ready to start the season right, right away. And you're 4-0 and with Nick Foles as your quarterback. You play you know, him another week. You, you, what do you do? You know, put him on the Case Keenum leash, and just until he falls off the leash, then you you put Wentz back in. I think the best thing you can hope for is that you do start out four and zero, and you keep playing him and see what happens. And sooner or later, the opportunity will come. That just gives Carson Wentz more and more time on the practice field, whatever it takes, and he will come in, and we will see the hopefully the same guy we saw this year. But I think you keep them both. Mm. I don't hesitate. It's too great of an insurance plan. And if it, something did happen where he's not ready for next season, can you go get the guy that can be the starter anyway? Right. And, and if they do lose, what's everybody going to say? Well, we, if we had Nick Foles, we wouldn't have lost. And now the front office and the coaches all have to answer to that. They lost some assistant coaches. They need to keep as much as they can in place with the team they had last year. Yeah, good answer. Good answer. I, I, was, I would also add to that, knowing the relationship between Foles and Wentz and knowing who both of those guys are. Right. Yeah. Not, not only would Wentz stand down and say, right now Foles is playing, but if they made the switch, I think Foles would come forward and go, this is Carson's team. Right. Like, you have a very unique personality subset. It's not like Tebow, where Tebow never says, I shouldn't be playing right now. Like, I feel like no, Foles no, would go, no. Let me this hold is a press Wentz. conference over here. I'm the second team quarterback. Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to give a press conference. Uh, yes, yeah. You mean that? Okay. Exactly. All right, so. Yeah, but, Sim- but it is a unique situation. I think no matter what happens, either one will handle it the right way. I think everybody's going to know it's going to be cut and dry if Carson Wentz is ready to be the opening day starter. Mm. If there is any doubt in my mind, man, you play it safe. And you go ahead, and then, you know, and Christopher, yeah, that scenario comes up. They go 4-0. and They go 5-0, and whatever. Oof, I would it, love it. it, it it's going to come sooner or later where they're going to need Carson Wentz. Right. And it, it will it be losses. Will it be narrow victories where there's plays left on the field? And then what happens, really, there'll be a time on the practice field, the coaches are all going to look at each other and go, Man, we got to put him in. He's just killing it. Yeah, right. And, and and it's kind of the a little bit of the Patriot way, which I hate to get into. But when they think you're ready, well, show us one more week in practice That's before right. we play you. That's right. Yep. And 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 we we've, we've seen this story before. It's not going to be the you know I don't think Carson Wentz is going to get T-shirts uh, printed up that. I will be the starter of the opening day or whatever that was. Like uh, Randall, I'll be back running. RG3, <laughs> when he had it, you know, I forgot what his slogan was. Right. Uh, Carson Wentz is not going to do that. and but, but they're both unique guys. But Nick Foles, the one thing I would do if I was the Eagles, I would compensate him and make him happy. And if he's not the starter opening day, I really he I think Nick Foles is a lot like Josh McCown. They get great satisfaction in you know the game, but they get great satisfaction of helping others have success. I really do, right. and and that might be the only two in the whole league. Yeah. Mm. Those That's two. it. You got to be a very you know in the words of Chris Rock in his new special, someone has to be willing to play the tambourine sometimes. Uh, yeah, let me ask you this. Think, and, you know that's mm. very, and that doesn't mean they're not competitive. When I talk about these two, that just it's what kind of human beings they are. Exactly. Yeah. Those quarterbacks go into the meeting room and they're watching practice and going, "That guy's not very good." <laughs> and then the other quarterback and they're on the field. They're hoping he throws every incompletion. Right. And then the game, throw a pick. Oh, yep. I can't believe they dropped the pick. You lucky or lucky? I, mean, I think on, you know what. I have another name to add to your two, and I think yeah, he's a that? starter, and it's Kirk Cousins. 
I think Kirk is very competitive and he wants to play. And the sweepstakes has officially begun. And I think the one thing that's, that your son, Christopher, and I learned from talking to Kirk is that he's ready to win. And with that all factored in, I want to read the list of the places that have an opening. And I'd like the Phil and Chris Sims, where do you think he's going to go official predictions? Wow. Denver. It look is looks open. The Jets apparently want to pay that money. All right, I'll say I'm gonna Arizo- go, you go. Denver, no. Denver, no. Sims, no. what do you think about Denver for Kirk Cousins? No. I want to hear the rest of the list first. Oh. Denver, Denver, New York Jets, Arizona, mm-hmm. Buffalo, Cleveland, Minnesota. Okay, I got my list. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's 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 the Jets and Minnesota. That to me would be the two that make the most sense. I don't know about how you, but I will just say this: with the Jets, they're going to love him first of all for this fact. Todd Bowles is going to be gone and fired if they don't win this year, so he doesn't want to deal with a rookie quarterback. I think he'd want to hey, have a. Hey, wow! Let's nobody puts that in. The, you know, people are. Just, that's why I got my own. They, yeah, oh, right. They, so, we want a rookie quarterback because we want our own guy. We want to. We want to get fired after we go four and twelve and give yeah. the next guy the quarterback. But let me right. tell you, here's what they want: we want to draft somebody with that sixth pick. And, you know, and it, we're going to groom him and we're going to get him going and it's going to work out. And, you know, if it all works out perfectly, he could maybe turn out to be a Kirk Cousins. Mm. Do, you oh. think, do you think Kirk thinks he can win with the New York Jets? I think the New York Jets are a better football team yeah. than everybody around America thinks. Right. Yeah, but at the same thought, point, like their best offensive weapon is like facing off the field like issues right now. With, like like Robbie well, they Anderson's. Have, they have a lot of money to spend, so let's just see where their team goes. It only right? takes a couple. Yeah. They got a decent offensive line. They got the makings of a good defense. Yeah. Um, you, you know. Yeah, they need to go most likely. Somewhere in a draft, which we know now, you know, there's yeah. a running back out there. <laughs> no, let me rephrase that. There's about 12 of them out there. They're going to have impacts in the league next year. And you don't have to get one in number one or two. We know that. Chris, They're you like the Vikings, too? They're going to in free agency probably. And you can find another veteran wide receiver, add something else to it, whatever, and you can be like going, man, we got a pretty good group here. And Chris, you like the Vikings, too? The <laughs> was sneaky good. It Chris, was. Chris, you like the Vikings also for Kirk Cousins. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm laughing because he's tried to butt into you talking <laughs> like four times and you just talk right over nah, him. So I, that's I, right. I can't. Man, when I get rolling, I'm going to go. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm going to get it out. And he's, if I he's, don't get it out, I'll forget it. He's a millennial, so just talk over Wait, him. So, but, the Vikings, yes. Wait, yeah, they have they have Keenum, Bradford, and Teddy, and there's a chance that none of them are there, yes. and then Kirk is there. So right, I mean, he's it's gonna be it's gonna be. A, I think that's the team a because I look at Thielen and Diggs in that defense and go, man. And Dee Filippo, right? Who's also who just worked. He's been in some West Coast offenses as well, which is gonna be a like an. That's and the. You, and you said this to me, Christopher. I was right. doing a Cleveland Browns, uh, the Cincinnati Bengals game on a Thursday. Night, right? And Dee Filippo was the offensive coordinator. Yeah. And I can remember our conversation. You go, look, I don't care what people think about the Browns, but I think Dee Filippo is doing a really good job on the offensive side. Yes, I'm a fan of Dee Filippo. Right. right. And they were, they were dealing with, I think at the time, the Johnny Manziel and Brian Hoyer. I think was the issue then. Yeah, I think it was the year before Manziel got there. I think it was the it might have been was it Hoyer. the year before. Yeah. It was yes, but yeah. yeah, they were like the 15th ranked offense in football, and they weren't a good team. Phil, what yeah, were your yeah. t- what were your top teams for Kirk Cousins? Well, you know, I think the Jets are interesting. I think they're going to make a strong bid for him. I do believe this. Everybody's getting all bent out of shape. You know, they, I love how everybody knows about the money. Oh, you mean you're going to give him a fully guaranteed contract? Uh, yeah, somebody he's going to get probably get a fully guaranteed contract. He'll sh- he'll probably sign a short term one, probably three years, because because that's hey man, the one thing I've learned. This guy's got it. In other yeah. words, he's. He's, he's willing to lay it on the table because yep. he thinks in three years he's going to be on a team that's going to improve, be there, and the market's going to change again, and he's going to be on top of the market once again. And everybody goes, oh, but he's, he's going to destroy the salary cap. Well, then so are all these other guys who are getting paid tons of money and their teams are not going to the playoffs. Let's see. Oh, that's right. Nick Foles and Case Keenum and Blake Bortles were in the, in the conference championships. 
Yeah, what are they ranking being paid by the NFL standard? Oh, franchise quarterback tags and all that stuff. So you can do this a lot of ways. I, I get tired of the argument. Kirk Cousins is a really good NFL quarterback. And it's funny, I just watched him today because I was trying to find some shots of quarterbacks that do things that I would want to teach kids. And I'm watching him going, man, he has changed so much since he came in the league. His body, he's stronger, he's quicker. He gets the ball out of his hand faster. And his arm is absolutely another level with power behind it than he had when he came in the league. So this tells me he works hard, he's a good guy, and teammates like him. And if that Redskin football team would have stayed healthy this year, they were going to be some pain in the rear end yeah. in the whole big picture. But the team fell apart with injuries, and, you know, unfortunate for him, but he hung in there, played, and took a beating like a man. He did. All right, we're done with you. We have no more use for you. Love you, Phil. Well, I, I love that. We're done with you. We have no more use for you. We have no more use for you. We'll talk I, to you, you know, next week when you're useful I know, I again. I things I could say to that, but I would be fired, so I'm going to let it go. Well, you won't be fired. You, know? this is, this is you not, can't be fired yeah, for this. Know, people listen, they'll repeat it, so, you know, come on. Okay, fine. I'm just yeah, telling you, you can say what you want to say here. It's a yeah. safe place. It's the it's trust a, tree. It's a safe place. Oh, <laughs> guys, there we go. All right. You, so, you know, that's just where you two, you two need a little safe place. Oh, uh, we do. Hey, Don't Adam, make some Adam, dinner reservations for Adam, your 38th wedding anniversary. What's up, Don't worry about where I make a reservation from. You just come and tag along and, and mooch off of us as I pick up the, the bill. Damn okay? Right. All right. Hey, All right. Adam. Yeah, what's just up? every once in a while, reach over, slap in the back of the big head, and Big Phil just said to do that, okay? I'll do a, I'll do a Terry Bradshaw skiing. Oh, man. There you go. All right. Have All a right. good day. See, See you, Dad. Guys. See ya. Uh, so the See, t- he hasn't talked in a while. You gotta. Oh my god! When he hasn't talked in a while, you gotta watch out up for a week. And I love when he does the Kirk Cousins thing. You've okay. heard that before. Well, because he didn't really love Kirk Cousins coming out in the draft. Oh, okay. And I did. And that's his way of like trying to justify that yep. he's gotten yes. better. So it's like our. our the this the is thing that I think is interesting about Kirk Cousins is we talk about you talked about how Jacksonville would revolt if Blake Bortles came back. Yeah. Kirk, I genuinely believe, is one of those guys when he comes into the locker room, I feel like everyone takes it serious. Yeah. Like, we talked about, oh, Chris Long, he comes to the Eagles because he sees promise. Kirk Cousins is someone that I believe probably has a spreadsheet at his house, and he's marking off pros and cons on every team. He's looking at, like, state taxes on salaries. Like, I believe he's looking at every single team, weapons that are available, and is truly – like, this is not a guy that's going to go on a whim or is going to feel loved from somewhere. Agreed. Everything he's doing is so calculated Mm -hmm. that whichever team he goes to, I'm going to take more serious next year. Not just – because he's on it, because I know he did a full, exhaustive evaluation right. of that That's team. That's why I think the Jets are more in, they're more of a player than the The they Cardinals think. have David Johnson coming back. they right. got a few good weapons. I don't know who's, who Who's hop- your other good weapons? Tell me. I know. Larry Fitzgerald. I know. Old. So, I mean, it's just that's that's the problem. I There's at, some good things. I but. look at Minnesota. I don't I – don't, I, he's not going to Cleveland. He's not going to Buffalo. Jacksonville would be great, but I don't think it's going to happen. And w- I think Denver's a little bit better than your dad's saying. I, I do. Just because you have Emmanuel Sanders and uh, Demarius Thomas. I do, too. I guess the only worry you have in Denver is just how much longer does that defense have, right? It's coming. it did take a big step it's back It's coming this towards the end. I mean, I do think they have another year or two of being a pretty good year unit but yeah. they're not going to like dominate like they once were all so. right rank these other free agent quarterbacks for me aj mccarron i'm going to give you this list aj mccarron drew Brees, teddy bridgewater case keenum san bradford and josh mccown they along with kirk cousins are the magnificent seven here is the paper oh thank you uh it you just pointed out that's right Right there. Yeah, right there. How would you the rank? Because Kirk Cousins is your number one. All right. Well, we're not counting Drew Brees, are we? I mean, he's going to stick around New Orleans. There's right? no effing way Drew Brees is leaving New Orleans. All right, so then Everyone's got to just end that conversation. The offense is made around him, and he's waited for four years for that team to finally be good, and they're finally good to where he can go to the Super Bowl. He's not going to go somewhere else to go. 
man, I got 180 million in the bank, but if I go here, I got 183 million. Right. It's going to change my life. All right. So then rank the other guys. All right. So Who, that, is Kirk Cousins your number Kirk one? Kirk Cousins is one. Yes. You were, you did not think that AJ McCarron was going to become a free agent. I did not, and I'm Are still you surprised? surprised. I am. I'm very surprised. I did not. I thought the NFL would win that case. And uh, by he saying would have that, even though, even though the Bengals elected to sit him, it was their choice to sit him, and that doesn't count as a season it did. Now he's a free agent. Yes, good for him. Um, I'm going to go with number two as Case Keenum. Okay. Okay. So you have one as Kirk Cousins, two, two as, as Case, Case Keenum. Keenum. I'm going to go three, Sam Bradford. Mm. Yeah. Even with all the injury stuff. The injuries are scary, yes. But Sam Bradford, the reason he's got nine lives and the reason you hear about him every he year. he can really throw it. Exactly right. I mean, when teams watch him on the field, they go, holy fuck, we've never seen a guy that can throw the ball like this. Sorry for the swear. It's okay. Holy we're gonna crap. We're going to work on this together. We are going to work on this together. <laughs> this is but a group. It's the reason he became the backup for the Vikings in the playoffs, because he looked so good in practice. They said, damn, we're going to make him the backup. Number so four. He's, th- he's three. Sorry. Number four. I would probably go with A.J. McCarron, even though I want to go McCown, but the McCown age thing just bothers me a little for the future. Right. So So then are you going McCown 5 and Bridgewater 6? I am. I'm going Bridgewater 6. I I have to see Teddy do more stuff first. uh, You've heard my assessment. I've watched him uh, in warm-ups. I've watched him on film. When he threw the interception against what was at the Lions in that game, I mean, yeah, I'm concerned with a guy that has not played in two years and almost had to have his leg in, amputated, and that I saw in person, and he has a limp, and they also didn't feel comfortable in making him the backup for the playoff games and made him inactive. So that's why. Look at the teams right above. Those are the teams that I wrote down that could be looking for a quarterback. I added Jacksonville. I added the Giants. Yeah, if Jacksonville you, is really going to be interesting. If I'm, you take a look at the quarterbacks that you've just ranked mm-hmm. do any of them make sense at any of the teams that need quarterbacks right now yeah well i mean of course we talked about the cousins thing right so That's- cousins to the jets or the vikings really whichever one he deems to be more interesting it does sound like the jets are going to give him the most money and we know that kirk is trying to ride off of the, the sunset. one i think about another one right off the bat that just comes to my head is sam bradford to buffalo Okay, it's jo- it's Brian Dayball, the new offensive coordinator. Brian Dayball's New England history. Josh McDaniels coached Sam Bradford with the Rams. He is their kind of guy, Bradford. He's a big pocket passing quarterback, you know, in theory, like a Brady, right? Mm. That's what they want for their offenses. That would make sense to me. Bradford going to a Buffalo, certainly. Um, after that, <sighs> McCarron, AJ McCarron to me could be in Arizona. He could be in Arizona. I think he could be a Denver Bronco. And I'm going to say an outside chance at a Jacksonville Jaguar. I, I, I want to be, I want to know what Jacksonville is going to do. Are they going to try to weasel quarterbacks out? Go to Jacksonville. Is it possible? It's going to be all about that fifth-year option mm. and what they are can and willing to spend at the position. So I have on to wait. On top and, of that. Right, on top of that. Now, if they feel like there's there's some people I've talked to that think they're going to be able to finagle their way out and that he might still be able to pass this physical, physical which I say negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full, and that's why he got the surgery because he knew that it's going to help him get the $19 million. Um I do think they got to be thinking it though. I just have I know Tom Coughlin enough to know that. Gosh damn, he's a smart football mind and he's got to look at his team and go. I'm one guy away. I'm one. I'm one guy away. Uh, so you haven't started looking at rookie quarterbacks yet. We're gonna start that no. soon once you dive into all that footage, and yep. I'm excited for that because I also see a lot of people having Jacksonville selecting a Lamar Jackson at sure. the end of the first that's round. That's gonna be very interesting. Well, that's the other Bill Polian thing we didn't talk about was Lamar Jackson. I mean, that was the other thing that was just uh, unbelievable. When do we start doing? Uh, can the Jaguars win the Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson? I, I mean, it's very not, soon. I mean, Lamar Jackson. To me, that's the other thing about that Polian conversation we just have to hit on is just erroneous on all accounts. Erroneous! Erroneous. Uh, What is that from? Wedding Crashers. Yes. Uh, Yeah. I mean, Lamar Jackson 
Is he your perfect prototypical franchise quarterback? Is he going to wow people with his personality and charisma when you meet him in person? No. I've met him in person. I've talked to him. He's a really polite, soft-spoken kind of yeah. kid. Bill he's Pullian not... put it as he was short. Well, I'm like, Lamar Jackson's 6'3". I met him. He's 6'3". Right. He is a legit 6'3". Maybe he's 6'2 and three quarters. First of all, let's just say this. You can't say this the year after Deshaun Watson. Okay? That mm. right away should be like, damn. We just had this conversation last year, and the guy we had the conversation about ended up being the best quarterback in the sport other than, like, Russell Wilson and Aaron Carson Rogers. Wentz and Aaron Rodgers. Right. So now we have You're the right. same we guy. We have the same thing with Deshaun Watson. So now we have the same guy with a guy that we actually don't have questions about with the arm. The arm, Because the one thing I can promise you is Lamar Jackson can throw the 100-mile-per-hour fastball in the You're corner. You're right. The thing with Deshaun Watson was, yeah, but he played in a system in Clemson when he didn't have to read it. Right. And they were giving him signals from the sideline. And he threw a lot line. of soft balls. He never had to drive the ball in there. Great. And he had a lot more talent on his team than other people. So, and I would argue that Louisville had no talent on their team compared to other people. Right. And then, then, and then so that all that. I'm He's excited going for you to watch. He's film. going in the first round. I just would have a hard time believing. If he doesn't, he's going in the top 40 to 45 picks. I would feel very confident without watching him saying that uh, right now. To me, that's the best situation for the Jaguars. He's going to run no worse than you four take, or five. You take a quarterback. If one of the top four or five guys falls, whether it's a Mason Rudolph or whatever it is, it gets down to there. You take the guy. It's But then again, no matter what they do, if Jacksonville brings in a free agent or a draft pick, it is directly threatening Blake Bortles, and the conversation becomes a QB battle immediately, Definitely. as it should. People are forgetting it was a QB battle last year. In preseason. Yeah. I mean, people like want to blame me. I mean, the first articles written about Blake Bortles last year were – Peter King on SI going, Blake Bortles is embarrassing himself the first two yeah. weeks of training camp. Uh, I'm out. I'm going to a meeting. Peace. Have That's a great rest of the podcast. I know we've gone too long. We've you. infringed on your next meeting. I know we've gone too long. Peace out. Peace See out. You, brother. Uh, again, we have Orlando Pace coming up right after this podcast, and he's going to be doing a few really good in their primes. We asked him who was the best tackle, Pace, Walter Jones, or Ogden. We asked him who would he take in their prime, Isaac Bruce or Turi Holt. We also did best pass rushers. He was great. Excited asked him to about hear that. Pancake, right? How that yeah, came all the about. Pancakes, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, we're just we're just fascinated with the Jaguar situation because it's the best team in the NFL that has apparently up until this point refused to acknowledge the elephant in the room. Yeah. But all right, so are you ready to get to some iTunes comments? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, this one is from Ginger Ninja, 425, best podcast ever. I love listening to guys talk about football who are actual fans. Haven't left a review out of pure laziness. Had to bring it up. How dare you, you oh, lazy wait, hold bum. On. I think you already did this. Talk about put a uh, clock on the field. Uh, no, he says put a clock on it for the referees. Um yeah, see, left has been out in L.A. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. I printed the wrong fucking ones. God damn it. I was out in L.A. having a really good time. Those are about a month old, so those don't count. You stupid, dumb ass. Don't, I don't need your attitude I right mean, now. gosh. Yeah, those are old. Those are from January. Yes. All right, I have them right here. All right, so... Uh, first one, Priest 2020 called this comment the Stugats bump and said, Foles is too low on your list, by the way. Is there anyone that you've said on the Lebatard list that you believe right now that you would have changed if you started the list now? Well, I am try I try not to be the prisoner of the moment. Foles was my 33rd quarterback. I named him that the Friday before the Super Bowl. Okay. Don't again. Don't be a prisoner of the moment. Again, this is a quarterback that we were talking about in the end of December as benching him for Nate Sudfeld, but now he's the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. Yeah. So I'm just keeping that in in perspective for everybody. Maybe he was a little low. The Super Bowl made him knocked him up a, a notch or two. Anyone else though? Not not a whole lot more. No, no. ECVD, do it for us. Eagles fans, release the Emmett Smith interview. We did that. It is out there. I had a lot of people going, man, Emmett was really angry at you. He's really harboring a lot of bad things. We're cool now. Me, me and Emmett worked it out. Sure we are. But uh, it was bad. Sure. DPEG23, free agency, Kirk Cousins. This has been the most boring week of my life since I started listening to the podcast. I keep checking to see if there's a new place that comes up and get a notification. Free agency. My Sorry. We gave them we gave them a lot of interviews, right, and now we're back in the more. fold. I'm excited. Free agency, my dream scenario for Kirk is to go to Cleveland. Here's why. They sign him, and let's say Jarvis Landry, and then they draft Barkley at one, and they take a quarterback to develop behind Cousins. Think about it. Barkley, Coleman, Gordon, and Landry for Cousins. If that happened, at least the Browns go 8-8, eight eight, as That's, always, guys. It's a great, he's great. 
That's great. But the, the quarterback behind Kirk Cousins to be your franchise quarterback, that's everybody's got to stop that. Like I heard that talk like maybe the the Cleveland the Cleveland Browns to draft a quarterback in number one and number four, right, and totally ruin the football team. So where the media can be split and the team can be split and the coaches can be split. I didn't mean to cut off no, the end of that thing. No, you keep going on your rants. So that is like, you know, if you're signed Kirk Cousins and you draft Saquon Barkley at one, no, let's draft another player that's going to help the team out, not somebody that's going to make the Cleveland Cover media go even crazier about the quarterback situation. And then if Kirk Cousins throws two interceptions and the Cleveland fan base goes, oh, we should play the number four pick in the draft. It is funny that, you know, you see these guys and they go, you improve your percentage of getting the quarterback, the, the best quarterback by taking two in the top four. And the guy in the waitings doesn't happen like how did that Garrett Grayson thing do go down in New Orleans thought he was the guy in waiting how did the um, Jimmy Garoppolo thing go for New England oh that's right yeah so the guy in the waiting bullshit is not real it happens with Aaron Rodgers that oh, was a good one yeah it happened with Philip Rivers with and Drew Brees there, there have been times it works well Philip yeah okay I sure. just I just don't sure. know about like Brett Favre it, it, it was we're keeping Aaron Rodgers because we don't know how much longer Brett Favre has left. Right. But signing Kirk Cousins to then draft a quarterback. Yeah, you can't do that. Let's just say this right now. Kirk Cousins is not going to Cleveland. He made it very clear that he enjoys winning. He is not going to go and take an extra $5 million to lose. He, he has 30 in the bank. More, More than, than that. He's got yeah. like 50 in the bank. Yeah. So I think that he has reached a point where he wants to get paid and win. Mm -hmm. That's what I got from talking to Kirk Cousins. I would agree with that as well. Alex Smith felt the same way. These are guys that have been in the league. They know what it means to get money. They want to be around smart coaches with a winning culture, and they want to win because yeah. they're, they're, they're guys that never got to taste it. Mm -hmm. Alex Smith has always been the disrespect. It's the only guy. way the career gets justified. That's the only way you can – in this day and age, you, you can't be justified unless you win playoff games and win the Super Bowl. You're I, not good until you do that. I had this conversation with my friend Dan last night. If the Super Bowl champion Eagles were Andy Reid and Donovan McNabb and not Nick Foles and Doug Peterson, is Donovan McNabb living a different life right now? And I said, absolutely. Well, when you win a Super Bowl, your life seems to be paid, paved talk, with gold. Talk to Phil Simms about that. He'll let you know about that. I mean, yeah, he talks about it all the time. His life would not be the same if he didn't win that game on January 25th, 1987. And, and have I, a good I day. answered it like this. Do you think the rest of his life, Nick Foles, has to answer why he never won the big game? No. no. Right. But when you don't win, you get asked that dumb question all the time. All the time. My friend Dan also wanted me to ask you this question oh hello dan being recruited Ooh. the number one player in high school mm -hmm. what was your recruiting trip to texas like and a scale of one going to church and 10 he got game bedroom scene oh no it wasn't that they weren't giving me like naked girls but on a the one side. through 10 what was, was your experience it was like then? an eight or nine i had a blast i really <laughs> did i mean you know <sighs> This is this is what separated me with from Texas with the other schools. First okay. of all, it's a great campus. You've been to Austin. Austin's a great city, um, but the team hung out together, and that's where I felt like it was more special than the other places. It was position groups. Some white guys at this party, black guys at another party. You know, O linemen were at this party. Whatever it, it may be, it was definitely separate and not like saying segregated. Like everybody got along. Yeah. But I just felt like when I went to Texas. Like, the two nights I went out, I went into, like, a bar, of course, and I was like, damn, like, the whole team was there. Like, mm. it was, like, it was everybody, and it was together, and you could tell everybody enjoyed each other. And Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. What about awesome. the more debaucherous parts? Well, the more debaucherous, I mean, did I see naked women on the trip? Yes, I did. Uh, but they you were, believe they it was were dancing on a pole. Uh, okay. I dr had a lot of underage drinking, certainly. Yeah. Um, Do you just get treated like the king? Are there some people that are a little bit like, because you're not guaranteed Some of the players are there. like, you could tell the players who are a little jealous or whatever. Yeah. Like, I might have been backup quarterback. Remember Adam Dunn, the big home run hitter? Yes. He was the, one of the quarterbacks down there. He didn't want Adam he didn't, Dunn, Cincinnati Reds. He didn't say, Reds, hey, so? let's go out on a part. Let's have more fun together. No. Could Adam Dunn throw it? Could really throw it. Well, he's a power hitter. Yeah, he was a power and thrower. And he's just a big man. He was a power thrower. I did not know that Adam yeah. Dunn was a backup yeah, quarterback, so he wasn't happy to see you. Well, no, he left because of me, pretty much. I think he just said, the hell with this, I'll go play baseball. And he's made, like, hundreds of millions he of dollars? He made the right decision. <laughs> so you actually set him down I the right I saved your career, Adam Dunn, no problem. Damn. No problem. No, but he, I mean, he had an actual, he had NFL type of arm talent to throw the ball. He really did. Wow. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but the, it, yes, you're treated like a king to a degree. Yes, the guy who, uh, you know, was my Bo Trahan, was my guy that sh showed me around, yeah. and he couldn't have been a better host. Yeah, I mean, just was gonna make sure everything was the way I wanted. I it always imagine. And then we have Texas Angels. And you have Texas Angels, what is that? which are girls that are affiliated with the football program. This is when it gets weird. That would help, you know, they could help things out, whatever it may be. They usually help in the recruiting process. Like, oh, you know, oh, my Texas Angel, she's a real pretty girl. It's great to have her, you know, walk me to meet the rest of the team or whatever it may yeah. be. Yes. yes. I just. Uh, it's a funny process. I just always imagine slowly walking into a party like in slow motion and there's just some guy in front of you that's like super well connected and he's just dapping everybody up and you're walking in and he's like, this is Chris. And everyone's like, woo! Like that's how I always imagine. And well, like, the one of the guys at the main strip club down there, the Yellow Rose, his name was Don King. He rolled it out for me. He was awesome. He wanted me to come to Texas. <laughs> he knew right away. He did. He, he was. Uh, he what was, do those guys look for you in return? Or is just having you there enough for them? Yeah. In return, they would want me there when I, if I did commit there, the, they would want me at the Yellow Rose. And is Rose. that a good sell for their. Yeah, because like we would go to the Yellow Rose. It was one of our hangouts. Like, damn, let's and go you to the. spend money there. We call it the Naked. Let's go to the Naked. We usually didn't have to spend much money, so but that's we were I mean, there. So and what's we had, the benefit for the I company? I think the fact that there are other men that said, damn, the Longhorns are here hanging out. We're going to come Validation. hang out, too. Right. Hi, I'm Chris Seams. When I was in college, I went to the Yellow Rose. If you got a few bucks, stop on by. The Yellow Tell Rose is right you. across the street from... The math. What's the movie with Matthew Days and Confused? Yeah. Hey, you know, all right, all right. The yeah, Yellow Rose that. is right across the street from where they dumped the paint on top of Ben Affleck wow. in Days and Confused, right? Wow. So that was like nostalgic as I well. I hated that character, the Ben Affleck character. Oh, he was like your the biggest D bag. He played it ever. perfect, right? Like really, did we all had that D bag in high school? Even I did. Pretty sure you were you that were, guy? No, I'm pretty sure you were that guy. No, I was not. No? No. You I weren't was, paddling? I was like the total guy that would have been paddling the paddlers. Like, how dare you paddle this indefensible gotcha. kid? I'm going to whoop your ass for so that. So you were the bully bully. I was, for you sure. You bully the bullies. Definitely. I appreciate that. Yeah, That's why no you're problem. a good person. No problem. Piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> NMAC 541, you guys are the white boy supremes. You have saved my early morning commutes to work. I listen all season long. I love how Sims dives deep into strategy. Lefko, spelled with a T, completes the package by playing the best radio personality around. <laughs> I'm a diehard Pats fan. I love the way you love your team. Hard to lose that game to Philly, but nothing bad to say about I'm the game. I'm glad to hear a Pats fan is listening to us. That's great. Yeah, thought that some of the Philly attitudes and comments were BS the week after, but then again, the Pats had a 28 to 3 banner for a year after Super Bowl 52. <laughs> That's a good one. They're very I self like aware. I like the self aware Patriots, Patriots fan. fan. Very much so. And Mac 54 1. Uh, hoping to hear some offseason podcasts with trade and free agent signing. Keep up the strong work, fellas. We'll get Perfect. there. That's what we're going to do. We'll trade get there. At free agent. It's funny. Like, I think a lot of people break down where free agents could go. And I think with the podcast, is it best to predict or should we talk about other football stuff? And then when the free agency happens, we'll just talk about it. But I like your predictions. Like Kirk Cousins, you think, is going to go to the Jets? I do. And McCarron, you're going to pick Arizona? I, I think I'm going to pick the Broncos. Broncos. I think it makes the most sense to me McC because they still have a Paxson Lynch. What about the Browns, though, and their love affair, Hugh Jackson, with him? I, I know. I just, this is me. Okay. I don't, don't want to share too much certainly, stuff. Right. I don't know if I want McCarron in the room with a rookie quarterback. I think that he's way too competitive at this stage of his career. Right. And I don't know if it's good for that development. I think that Josh McCown with a rookie quarterback is the right. guy. Or even like a Sam Bradford if they wanted to do that yeah. route as well. Because Sam that. Bradford's competitive, but he's at a point of his career where he gets it. But we don't know what McCarron is yet. Yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's I don't where it's put him weird, in there. too. You don't want to have him and Kaiser having like a... I, and I just the stories I heard about him in the draft process, he... I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Giles, 1994, great podcast. Congrats, Lefko and the Eagles win. I'm a huge Texans fan. I've been since they were established. Can't even imagine how happy I would be if they won. Let me just say that I had guys in L.A. come up to me and be like, hey, man, I love the podcast, and I'm an Eagles fan, and we just hugged each other. Yeah. Like, that's what fucking happens to me right now. Did your guys' it's upper lips get big together? <laughs> <laughs> it's just at a point where, like, you get randomly happy, and it's dope. It's awesome. With that being said, which team without a Super Bowl win will be the next to win their first championship? Okay, the, without Teams a Super Bowl never win. never won Super Bowl. I got it. Don't worry. 
Uh, there are 13 teams that have never won a Super Bowl. Uh, the Jaguars, obviously, are one of those teams. I mean, the the the, the Jaguars, Lions, and the Browns. Titans. The AFC South is all there. So I have Cardinals, Lions, no longer the Eagles, Titans, Chargers, Browns, Bills, Vikings. Um, God damn it. Should have looked this up ahead of time. That's all right. I got it. All right. So Titans, Texans, Bengals, Jaguars, Browns, Chargers, Vikings, Lions, Cardinals, Falcons, Panthers, Bills. So there's 12 teams left. I look at these teams and I go, Panthers, Falcons, Lions all have their quarterback. You know, Houston have their quarterback of the future. Jaguars are, in my mind, the best team, and I think they could win the Super Bowl next year yep. if they get a quarterback that mm -hmm. we actually like. I think the Vikings are in the middle of their window, too. I think the Lions could possibly surprise some people if Patricia gets that defense right with Stafford on the other side. I don't think the Panthers are that far away. No. I don't think the Falcons are that far away. Not at all. I think the Chargers are really close. I think there's a lot of teams on this list that could make a jump. Yeah, the Chargers, the Falcons, the Panthers, the Texans, I think, are the four that Those really are jump your out four. to me. They, they really jump out to me, yes. I just think they have a lot of good pieces in place already. They're very close, and it's really just a matter of one or two roster moves and, and a little luck to make that all happen. I'm going to ask you a question. I would like to save this in the vault for a long time. Save it in the vault. Chris Sims. Yes. Do you believe the Cleveland Browns will win a Super Bowl in the next 10 years? Oh, in the next 10 years. It is 2018, Ooh. February 21st. Will the Browns win a Super Bowl in the next 10 years? Yes. Going to say they do. Wow. Yeah, I think this is all setting them up for it right now. It won't be Hugh Jackson. It'll be the next coach that takes the advantage Do of this. Do you think the Browns will win a Super Bowl in the next five years? No, but I think they're going to be really set up to have – they're going to be like, to me, it's going to be like Jacksonville Jaguars 2.0, where they're going to have all these years of going, damn, they got two or three picks in the top 35 the whole, every year, and they're going to get to a point where they're going to go, holy crap, look at this roster. It's unbelievable. I think they're close to being able to do that. This year's draft is going to be huge to them. Yeah. What they do in free Man. agency. I think they got the right GM. You know, I like you. I don't love them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say they do it. I am. Damn. Ten years is a long time in the NFL. It is a long time. All right, that's a good way to end it. Uh, again, Orlando Pace is coming up right now. Friday's episode, we are going to have three defensive white boy Supremes. Jared Allen, who was hilarious. Luke Keekley, we talked about his woodpecker thing. And TJ Watt, we talked about favorite pizza. And then also his protein, because he loves protein. protein. So that's coming up on Friday. Um, Guys, hit us up on social media. Let us know what you want to talk to because now that Sims and Luff goes in the offseason. Oh, don't let me start ranting about the environment. It's 70 degrees today in New York, everybody. Global warming's here, everybody. It'll be 44 tomorrow. Oh, good. oh, that makes me feel better that it's 70 one day and 44 the next. It's awesome. Someone hit the air conditioning. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Hit us up on the Instagram, Twitter, uh, all that stuff, at Sims and Lefko for Sims. Peace out, homies. Fendrick would say good, good evening. evening everyone. And the L-E-F-K-O-E man says good night. Holler at y'all soon. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Saying. Okay, cool. Stand by one second. Get your mic set. Thank you. I mean, the fact that Hold she said second. "shut up and dribble," and then he sent out, you know, Kid Rock. Uh, oh, so good. Nugent. I mean, all these idiots who they've had on Fox News that they are. That's fine. Uh, oh, who do they have? You know, what's the karate guy? All right, uh, uh, Steven Norris. Seagal.
Ted Norris talking Chuck about Norris. global warming. Ted Nugent. Ted Chris Long Rose. And no, Chuck Norris. Norris doing, Chuck, Chuck Norris. Norris doing it. Right. We're still rolling, so whenever you guys are ready to go. Uh, can you just do the music intro? Yes. Then we'll start live. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, I can do the music intro. Five, four, three, two. It is a special Friday interview edition of the Sims and Lefko podcast for your weekend. If you've already listened to episode 154, we want to bring you just some more conversations that we had on Radio Row that were awesome. Yep. Once we get through these three, we still have like seven left. Do we like, really? We interviewed so many people, and we tried not to ask a lot of questions about the Super Bowl just yeah. because they're good conversations with people that if we had them on now, we would ask the same questions. Right. So we're going to start off uh, with Jared Allen, who you had some experience playing against. Uh, he talks about riding off into the sunset. And when we talked to Kirk Cousins, Kirk was like, I would love to do the riding off in the subset, sunset like Jared Allen did. Jared Allen is one of the more interesting characters, I think, in NFL history. Yes, he is. And I He wined us, he dined us, and he 69 us. That's his line. <laughs> yeah. But, man, it, it's, it's rare when you get a long snapper that becomes an all-time great pass rusher. Yeah, it is. And, and it's, it's a wild story. It's a wild story. Uh but man, watching him in person over the years, and then when you meet him in person, he's big. He is. He's big. He's long. He uh, reminds me of Jason Kelsey. And we had some good talk about that too. You know, the tryhard guys. Yep. That's, that's right. my favorite thing is we openly talked about what is it like to be called a Johnny tryhard when you're actually athletic. Right. Here's Jared Allen talking about it. Cool. Um, all right. I'm just going to keep going. You just make this one big record. Okay. Yep, you're good. We're so well. Okay. So Jared Allen, super personality guy, a lot of fun. Luke Keekley, not as much personality as Jared Allen, but I think one of the better linebackers that we've had in this league in a really long time. Definitely. S smaller than I thought he was going to be. Right. Yeah, I mean, not everybody's as big. You know, the public is obsessed with the size of the package. I didn't mean the sexual end. I know there, yeah. but it's something that I've, you know, you and I have talked about. Is how people come up to me and go, "Oh, you're bigger than you." I thought you that were. It happens all the time. All the time, and it happens throughout. Or, or I have other guys that meet me and meet meet me and go, oh, "I met, you know, this DB yesterday. He's not that big. Great. He's so much faster than you. You have no idea." And his ability to apply force and speed and yes. power into the ground. It's that's what makes these guys. The outside world is obsessed with size at times. I don't realize it until I go into public gyms, and then I go, "Damn, everybody here is just obsessed with the size of their pectorals yeah. and the size of their arms, and they can only squat ten pounds." Of course, uh, I know it's just it's unbelievable to me, and it just size doesn't mean that Keekly can pack a powerful punch. I think the cool thing with Keekly is we've done a lot of stories about advancement in helmets and yeah. trying to prevent concussions, and what we saw from him last season, not the one that just happened was really, really scary, mm -hmm. the crying and all that. And he developed they, – they had someone develop that technology, places pressure on the jugular vein, similar to that of a woodpecker. And I love that story when it came out, and we got a chance to ask him about it. Here is Luke Keekley talking about what it's like playing the NFL, other great linebackers in the league, and the technology he uses to hopefully prevent concussions in the future. Okay. And last one. A three, a two. All right, so last guy that we got a chance to interview for this one is T.J. Watt, brother of J.J. Watt. T.J. was bigger than I expected. T.J. had some real big size to him. He's natural big, too. Yes, I mean, just, like yes. a big neck. Yes, protein shake, for sure. What's that? You said protein shake? When you think about him as a first-round pick, did he live up to that? This year, do you do you see the potential of being a first round pick I, rush end? I did, and I'll say I, I I was on the fence about him being a first round pick. I think I thought he I was really like an early second round pick. I mm -hmm. think that was my final evaluation. I think the one time the one thing you can't put value on at times, and it's hard as an evaluator, is this guy the what you can expect consistently oh, good yeah. out of him. And I think that's what really his value is. 
going to lie is the fact that he is going to be a guy that, yeah, his game is not necessarily predicated on speed and explosion off the edge. So that's also a good thing because when it's year 9 and 10 right. and that goes away, it's not going to really matter. It's not going to affect his game. He hasn't been winning that way. He wins with, you know, moves, thinking, pure power, setting up guys that way, and he's going to have an extremely long career because of it. It's a family. We talked about JJ. We talked about, you know, did the Steelers hype up the Jaguars too much before that game and then right. what tackles he faced that were really, really special, who he wants to steal moves from. It's a young up-and-coming star in the NFL. Here is TJ Watt. Okay, and then we're just going to do a close. Three, two. All right, that is it. Three defensive white boy Supremes. As always, hit us up on social at Sims and Lufko. We're going to have a brand new episode on Monday. We're going to be in here breaking down whatever happens over the weekend. Do you have any big weekend plans? What is the weekend? I don't even know what the hell I got going. I got not a lot. I don't got a lot of work, which means Sims I got a lot so of much free, free time. time. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's when I get random texts that were like, hey, I need to talk about this. And I'm like, I don't know what he's doing right now, but it's good. <laughs> Four Sims. Peace out, homie. Fendrick would have said good evening, and the L-E-F-K-O-E Man. says good night. Guys, have an awesome weekend. We appreciate you. At Sims and Lefko, hit us up. Talk to you soon. There are very few times, Sims, where I see you stand next to somebody and I go, damn, Sims look small as shit. <laughs> and this is one of those times, Orlando Pace, we have already warned him. You can say whatever you want. If you want to curse right now. Just get it out the way. Yeah, just shit, get it out cock, the way. balls. Just right, say everything, it. right? <laughs> um, man, dude, uh, you for the longest time, when I thought of left tackle, it was Orlando Pace. Yeah. And I'm curious. Man, you can't hide. I see football players hiding all the time. Everybody knows when you walk in. What is the number one thing that people say to you when they see you? Do you play football or something? I'm like, dude. <laughs> yeah, obviously. But, you know, everybody wants to know if you play a sport or, or man, you don't look this big on TV. And, uh, you know, so it's one of those things. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I bet. That's the number one thing said to me, and I'm not even in the same class as you as big, but – yeah, people just don't realize how big left tackles are. All right, so give They're us the ultimate species they of are, human. They yeah, are absolutely. out of a cave of like so cavemen. So what when you see absolutely. another left tackle and you're both like six, seven, three, fifteen with right. quick feet? Right. Is that like a bond? Oh, absolutely. I think all left, sort of like quarterbacks a little bit sometimes. So you see quarterback, you see left tackles, and you respect them. Like you'll see guys, and you know, like Andrew Withworth, who's with the Rams. Oh man, I'm like dude. Because we share so much of the same either struggles or successes in life, Close, right? Clothes, airplanes, shoes, right. like tight, you know, everything, man. So we, we have the same struggle. I have a few in their primes for Orlando Pace. Okay, I so like this. So we play a game in their prime where okay. I give you some names and you pick in their prime. Okay. So I'm going to start off with guys that you may have faced. Okay. First in their prime, it's four guys. Right. Michael Strahan. Okay. Jason Taylor, okay. Dwight Freeney, All right. Javon Curse. Oh, I know Ooh. where he's going, I think. All right, so what's your prediction? I think he's going to go with Dwight Freeney because he was a little – he was smaller than the rest of those guys and quicker, and that would probably right. be the guy that give the hard time to this big guy. Absolutely. Yeah, I think – He's Fre your number I think, one? I think Freeney in his prime because – that spin move, no matter how good you set. Why is that? Why is it so unstoppable? Because he, he has so much speed coming up the field. You got to respect the speed, right. number one. Right. And then and it hits you so then quick. Then it hits you so quick. And the, the moment as offensive tackle, you turn those hips, <laughs> and he's spinning at the same time. It's almost like Who would be last in that one? Curse, Freeney, Taylor, Strahan. Ooh, that's tough. I got uh, it's no disrespect. No, no, no all, these are no all disrespect. awesome. This so is... in, the, in the order, this is a good podcast, by the way. I like it. So <laughs> I'm telling you, I like it. Uh, so I will probably go Freeney, Strahan, Taylor, Curse. Wow. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got another. No, I. Mm, I think I would be right there with you. I think that's exactly how I would go. I played against some of them. I didn't yeah. get Strahan. Yeah. But yes, Freeney getting off the ball. Yep was scary yeah. uh, because you were just like, wow, he looked like he went off, like the ball wasn't even snapped yeah, and he was already absolute, a step up field. I have another in their prime, but these are tackles right, and cool. you're involved. Oh, man. In their prime, <laughs> three, Orlando Pace, Walter Jones, Ooh, Jonathan Ogden. Jonathan uh, Ogden. The I didn't even finish Jay and he's at Jonathan Ogden. I already know. Yeah, those, those are the golden ages tackles, yes. man. And, and 
I'm a, I'm a confident guy, so I would always put myself first. But I think we all we all have our strengths. But uh, Walter Walter Jones has, has some good years. I'm gonna say me, Walter Jonathan. Okay. Do you agree? Uh, <laughs> he's going. Yeah. You he, know he, he will tell the uh, truth. He'll tell the truth. He will tell the truth. I I, I do agree actually though. <laughs> wow. I do. That's that's serious shit uh, right there. Walter Walter was pretty damn amazing in his prime, yeah, like for that like that short period of four yeah. or five years, yeah. Yeah. where you were just like he's indestructible. You right. can't do anything around right. him. Right. But man, Orlando, I know he, he invented the pancake, <laughs> which was so genius by Ohio State. People don't realize they were trying to get you to have a Heisman campaign. Absolutely. How do you get an offensive lineman? There's no stats. They invent the pancake block, yeah. which you took to a whole nother level. Right. Yeah. And it just for me, it was just bringing attention to. Offensive lineman, and obviously, you know, you probably never get an offensive lineman actually win the Heisman. Right. But to be in that conversation was special. Right. It was a great time at Ohio State. I and was then, wondering if you could invent statistics for offensive linemen other than pancakes. What else should we chart? Like, oh, wow. what are the stats that I we think, should? I look think. At? I think for most guys, how many sacks? Did, did you give up a sack? Did you not give like sacks? And sure. Then, you know, you know, blocking the fit, the way you grade it out, and I guess it's all subjective at some point, yeah, of right? Of course. So, but you know, just it's, it's hard other than pancakes. We want to invent of, fucking the play up yeah. as a stat. Yeah. Just a guy that like blows up the or offensive like defensive line. lineman, right? Like <laughs> right, like right. Jadeveon Clowney, like he's one of our favorites because yeah. you watch a game and he might not have, he might have one tackle and people yep. go, well, what's so great about him? He had one tackle, right? But he busted through the line of scrimmage like thirty other times and ruined the run play right. or made the quarterback move so somebody else could right. get a sack, right? And nobody can quantify that this day and age. Because it's not on the stats. Absolutely, or the big defensive tackle that holds the point of attack. Right, line. it makes a mosh the pit. The Ray Lewis's of the world yes. make all the plays. Yes. Though, right. So it's, yeah, those guys, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, like that, get no screwed. Right. Get Absolutely. screwed. Absolutely. I, I hear that you used to play basketball. I did. Yes. What was your pro player comparison? I always said I was a mix between Michael Jordan and Shaq. <laughs> but that's in my own head, though. Yeah, that's that, the is, that is in your head. head. <laughs> Let me just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, throwing the challenge flag on exactly, that one. Exactly. Um, how big are your kids? Uh, my, and can I invest in them? <laughs> I have a thing where I want to, like, pay money to invest in kids that I think are going to be really special. Right. And then when they get big, I can. This is my business venture. Right. My two younger boys are going to be bigger kids. My oldest son is more like my wife. He's okay. a little smaller, but uh, they're pretty good athletes, though. So can I? We'll talk about it. All right. We'll talk. Just like yeah. 10, 20. They're playing football, though. Like you had no issue with them playing football. No, 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 right? no, 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 no. You know, obviously. Um, you know, the more you know about, you know, injuries and concussions and things like that, the better off you are. But, you know, they love the game. And, and I, who, who, who am I to stop them from, you know, pursuing their passions? Do you root for anybody other than the Patriots in every Super Bowl they're in? Do you just go, who's playing the Patriots? I'll root I for know, them. I know, yeah, I'm, I'm totally against everything Patriots. Yeah, man, I hear you. You should of, be. But then I'm tired of them winning. Aren't you guys a little tired of them? I, I am. I I'm really, torn I, I respect their greatness. I know. Yeah. But. I respect it, too. I did work up there a little, too. Right, yeah. And, and even though I have personal relationships, I'm with you. At times, I'm like, damn, I'm so sick of talking about these guys. I can't yeah. take it anymore. But you got to respect them, though. So I've been having this conversation. And obviously, in Super Bowl 36, we played, we took, we lost, but to, for them to be doing what they're doing today. Exactly. Still, right. You, they haven't been doing that same thing the whole time. Dude. Look, Eagles, that Steve Spagnolo just came out and said, we believe they were they were taping our walkthroughs. You guys have long said that. And what's funny is professional athletes don't make excuses like that normally. I don't hear athletes blame things. They usually go, it was on us. But this is the one time where I'm hearing multiple teams going, something ain't right. Yeah, it's not right. But at the same time, if we study enough film, and you know this, if you yeah. study enough film, you kind of know what teams are going to run a yes. little bit. Yes. Am I, am I yes. agreeing? Like, you get in the red zone, you know what teams are going to run in the red zone. Yes. So it's, it, you still have to execute. You still have to go out and block. You still yeah. have to go out and do everything the way you want to do it. But, you know, obviously, you know, there's no real secrets in the NFL. No. Either we're going to run – formations we're going to run out of those. I, I would have been skeptical, too, until I worked there and I saw kind of the inner workings and a yeah. little bit how they break people down, and then I started to go – Damn, maybe they haven't been cheating. Maybe they are just whooping everybody's butt. I mean, because it, it is genius in, the, in how they do things. I have another in their prime. What's yeah. that? Isaac Bruce Ooh. or Tory Holt. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. he's putting you on a friendship on the now line look, here. Isaac and Tory is going to be watching this, though, right? <laughs> um, obviously. You love them both. Yeah, I love them both, man. They both had great. But Isaac, Isaac, uh, you know, just I watched. I had an up-close personal view in Tory too, but just the way he worked, his ethic, and, and, and everything. And I – you know, picking both of those guys, you can't go wrong with right. picking either one of those guys. 
with Isaac Bruce and, and the things that he done. And you don't even realize it until you look at his stats. Yeah, I know. And you see 15,000 yards. They're sneaky. Because he didn't do a lot of talking. He wasn't one of those vocal guys. he did guys. a lot of that before the whole crew got Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, Isaac is, Isaac is uh, you know, he, you know, pro. Hopefully both of those guys are It'll be nice. in the hole. Actually. All right. Get well, the whole freaking team One in. more. Because we got to give uh, Kate. Of every course. Kiss becomes, well, every kiss becomes. I messed it up. Begins with K. Every kiss begins with K. Let's get it right. <laughs> I messed it up. Damn. <laughs> Uh, wait, anybody you watch right now coming off the edge in the NFL where you go, like, wow, like anybody, the Cleo Max, the Von Millers, you know, whoever it may be, Everson Griffin, any – do you think – this is really where I want to go with this. This is where I wanted to go. Do you think there's more great pass rushers now than even at the start of your career? Because, like, there's a part of me now that I feel like there's a – there's a Lawrence Taylor almost on every team, and that's no disrespect to Justin Lawrence Taylor. Justin Houston, Von Miller. Well, let, me, yeah. let me tell you, I think I think right. when the passing game elevated, yeah. then you have to go get guys. You have to get. Mm. But I think when you say that, I think the offensive line position has digressed a little bit, got worse. Okay. So it makes those guys look that much better. But when you're looking at it, you got Von Miller and Mack and those guys, dude. Right. Those dudes are serious, man. Yeah. They have they have me thinking at home, like, dude, I wonder if I could really like. <laughs> Get, you know, get, get on them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, get on them a little bit, right? <laughs> right. So, do you remember what team Orlando Pace played his last season with? Chris Sims. Oh gosh, I do know this. I Chicago Bears. Chicago you Bears. Right. You guys did your research. I, I like it. Your no, mine was a, no research. Right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> You're a fucking weirdo. Uh, you play with Jay Cutler. I did. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, I think me and Jay both came in, and, and uh, he came into a veteran locker room, and it was a little different from what I experienced. And uh, from a leadership standpoint, because you had the Erlackers of the world yeah. and all that. So he was just trying to fit in and trying to, you know, obviously, you know, he's well documented of some of the antics and things like that. But Did you, you know, see that or was he a good guy? I, I didn't get it. I was only there Damn. for one year. So. He wasn't that? smoking cigarettes <laughs> at halftime, was it? sound, though? He was exactly. smoking cigarettes. Give me a story. I, I, Give me a color no, story. I don't, I don't really have a color story, man. I think, uh, you, you know, what you see is what you get with him. How, what was that team like as a whole? Was it fun? It wasn't really that fun. It was it was good. I, I like Lovey Smith. I think he was a great coach. Yeah. I really like the way he let veterans kind of manage that team and go through that team. So gotcha. it was kind of cool. But Jay was kind of just kind of coming into his own, trying to fit in. Yeah. And then uh, you know I, the rest is history. So all right. Yeah. So here's how we are going to do uh, advertisements: is you are going to pitch us. I'm not helping you. Sims isn't helping you. Sims, you have a one through ten. It's like the dunk contest. Oh, yep, gotcha. And we are going to see how ten. you are. You guys gonna, are putting me on the spot. Yes. Yeah, you know it's it. not just going to be you, Orlando. So tell us today what we need to know about Kay. Dude, do you want to win Valentine's Day? Boy, with your do girl? I. I. I need to. He's whipped already. Let me just tell you. If you're whipped, then go to Kay, man. We're talking about winning the Valentine's Ooh. at Kay. So every kiss begins, begins with, with Kay. Kay. Mm. So. Go check out. Take care of your girl at K, man. Take care of your girl at K. All yeah. right. I'm going to go. You married? No, dude. dude I am. They got great engagement. I'm going eight. eight. I'm giving them an eight. I'm, I'm giving, giving you a nine. Well, since you're married, how many years have you been married, Chris? <laughs> uh, 13. Oh, oh spot. 13. Oh, yeah. You can't remember. You need to go to K. I do. Chris. Trust me. You can't it remember. A nine. I'm going to nine now. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't remember it, Chris, you need to make well, your trust me. She'll, she'll treat herself to K Jewelers See, at some point. I know that. I'm just telling you, man. But if you can't remember, that's a great makeup gift, too, man. Yeah. yeah Orlando, okay, man. starting out Orlando. fiery with the nine. <laughs> you are the man. He knew saying. what to do. He attacked me and the girlfriend, <laughs> right. you and the wife. Right. He's He's really you. smart. Yeah. And if they're, wa- if they're Day. watching, pressure zone, boys. Yeah, yeah. you're right. And is this your Super Bowl ring right here? No, it's the Hall of Fame. Oh, excuse me. Absolutely. Man. So good. Uh, everyone says when you're up for the, for the Hall of Fame, what matters more, the Super Bowl or the Hall of Fame? And then the people that had the Super Bowl go to the Super Bowl. Right. The Hall of Fame, though, did it make – like, what was that, ex- like, emotion like? Well, it's great. And I, and I say it's great because when you're, when you're amongst the best that's ever played the game, yeah. it doesn't get any spe- more special than that, man. You're in, I'm in room with, with Jim Brown. Right. And we're having conversations and lunches and – and, and you sit in this room and you see the whole history of the game in front of you, and you actually rubbing elbows with these guys, and you're like, "Wow, it's, a, it's surreal. It really is." Yeah, I can imagine. That's a, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you uh, you've had it, the though. career. You're gonna, you know, like in 10, 15 years, right. people are gonna be saying that about you. I mean, I'm in a room with Orlando Pace, right, yeah, Mr. Pancake. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. By the way, yeah, if you don't get a sponsorship deal with like Aunt Jemima, I asked I'm him. I was like, I'd something. actually rather see him eat how many pancakes in. Yeah, he said it could be a contest, big stack. Let's get some business. I'm go. gonna invest in your kids. Absolutely. We're gonna get you in the front of the pancake <laughs> absolutely. box. Absolutely. Orlando Pace, living legend, big 
Bowler, shot, caller in the flesh. Appreciate Dude, you, brother. You guys got to have me back. This is a cool yeah, show. Right? You have, now you're obligated. You have, now you have to come on. The green light whenever like you want, it, big guy. Like We're going to get your cool. information. These K Jeweler guys are always in our office, Dude, these gals and guys. Absolutely. Yes. And you guys stop by, man. Take care of your girlfriend. Take care of your wife. Yeah, okay. Hey, Julius. Hey, he's trying I'm to working, spend man. my money already. I'm How dare he spend my money? <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, you guys have a good one, man. Yeah.